Hi friends, uh, good evening and this is your host Sankit Kanelwal joining you from Delhi, India and uh, we have Kambali Kalum joining us from Delhi, North Carolina and uh, we have Nick Palaveda joining us from Delhi, North Carolina. Good morning team and good morning Nick and uh, welcome to IBM TV uh, Startup uh, Wednesday and uh, as usual uh, we are expecting a lot of startups will show up today because uh, that's the uh, anthem for us on Startup Wednesday. So yeah. I don't know, okay, but good evening to you. I hope your evening and day. I hope your day's been well and your evening's great. So yeah, it's it's good even good evening in uh, New Delhi and good morning in the United States of America. Yeah. What time is it in New Delhi right now? It's seven thirty p.m. Seven thirty p.m. So we run prime time in India <laughs> and we run morning shift in um, yeah. the United States. And Malaysia is easy to figure out. It's uh, actually ten p.m. In Malaysia, for the, our people are going to be joining us in, in Malaysia, but we have a very exciting week coming up and actually a couple weeks in IBM TV. Uh, we do know that we're going to have Rick Rosner, the person who had the highest IQ in the world, will be on our show tomorrow. Uh, we're trying to grab Timur Garev. Um, I'm trying to grab him away from Jim Mead, who's in the background, to get him on the show with Rick Rosner, uh, who actually has the world record for simultaneous blindfold chess. He played 48 games in Las Vegas, simultaneous blindfold chess. If you want to know how hard it is, you go like this and you you make the moves, you, you yell out the moves to the person and you got to keep track of 48 boards. Okay, go try that sometime. So he's going to be one of the special guests on Monday, Economics Monday. Right now we have scheduled $2 billion uh, money manager. Owners of billion dollar money management funds will be there along with two law professors and perhaps, I'm still working on it, the leading attorney in the United States on Hollywood production. He was the lead attorney for a um, series called Star Wars. I don't know if anybody heard of it. Uh, it was big in the United States. I don't know if it was big here in the, the in Can India. Can we have but, him on Tuesday, Celebrity Day? Uh, we might be able to get him on uh, Celebrity Tuesday. I, I actually bought all his books. Um, his, uh, Mark Liptak, he's really famous in the legal community because he is the biggest name in entertainment law in the world, in, in Hollywood. As we know from Henning Morales, that is the world. There's nothing outside of LA County. So for those, those who are listening around the world, just realize, just realize when Henning comes on, he makes a statement, all the talent, not some of it, all the talent in the world are in LA County. So well, for anybody who lives elsewhere. Hasn't been to Bollywood yet. So. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important to forget everything because uh, we do the same work at half or maybe one uh, one fourth of the cost. <laughs> That's why I mean I still remember. I mean we are uh, discussing about uh, the movie Gravity, uh, uh, Gravity or something. I mean which was a space movie, and then we really sent one of our satellites to space at uh, lower cost of uh, what the movie production is. So that's how we we both well, <laughs> you know, the the apologist from New Delhi. I mean, what can I tell you, Anne? Look, look, the United States of America lives in its own world. Okay, we don't recognize other countries at this point in time, but we do recognize what's going on in the other Washington, and I believe we have the Washington reports. So let's find out, get our update from uh, Washington, Bill Trezevant. Or Washington yeah. DC. Yeah, or, somebody uh, to space cheaper and we did a movie about it. I think that's Well there he is. Well, well we're gonna listen to your Washington report. I hope this button works. Well, I guess um, the rest of it isn't there. <laughs> that was the intro. It sounded pretty good. So um, let me okay. see. We uh, have some uh, technical difficulties, and uh, we'll be pulling up uh, that uh, video soon. Uh, oh, really? Yes. Okay, but we actually have the guy who does the Washington Bill, report here. Yes. yes, Bill yes. Trezevant from the Tower of Power, Washington, D.C., which we know everybody has Potomac fever when they get there because it kind of like goes to your head whatever is going on in Washington, D.C. And seriously, the, I, I believe the people in Washington don't even recognize the other parts of the world like L.A. or uh, San Francisco or any other place. And speaking of San Francisco, I see somebody, I smell somebody from San Francisco. Oh, there he is, <laughs> Jim Ead from the Ead Foundation in San Francisco. I knew he was around there somewhere. Uh, I don't know if the people in Washington, D.C. recognize it. And then foreign countries are very foreign to us, especially Australia, mate. Good day, mate. Willie <laughs> uh, really Hill from Melbourne, Australia. So we have 
uh, fairly uh, mixed panel. We have uh, several people from out of the country, like um, Willie from Australia, Ann Kit from uh, New Delhi, and Jim from San Francisco. And then we have the Americans, Kim, me, and uh, Bill. So the thing is, we have all all three of us representing the United States of America. I want to recognize something about Willie that a lot of people probably don't know, but I think he was one of our oldest longtime fans uh, before he even came on board uh, and started working with us. So um, Willie, I don't know if you remember it, but I remember you reaching out to us uh, a long time ago, probably before we even started our board of advisor uh, meetings. Um, yeah. I remember Willie reaching out to us. So. Well, well, yeah, he ran Startup Australia. I, I ran yeah, through Startup exactly. Australia. And startups were big prior to COVID-19. I don't know where they're going right now. But the thing is, um, the startup community had been growing very rapidly. Willie headed up uh, Startup Australia, and I watched it. It was growing very rapidly. I think they had about 10,000 people. Then he started in Startup Europe, another 10,000 people. And uh, he became the face of the startup. So the thing is... Um, Startups are a, a big community that IBM TV wants to support because they're the leaders of innovation. Let's face it, okay? The, the, the big companies, you know, after a while they get so big, they move like elephants, all right? But the fast moving road runners, the road runners yeah. that Ooh, move fast Ooh, are the reference. startups. What? That's an Aussie reference, road runners. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, because, well, well, I, well, maybe I shouldn't have used elephant because that's mixing Asia with, you know, Australia. Okay, so <laughs> let's see what's emus. big in Australia. Like emus. <laughs> okay, you get these big emus right, that move right, slower. Right. You got the road runners that move fast, mate. There we go. That, that's the reason people in Australia can understand road runners and emus. And, um, and, and so that, that, that's kind of the difference. I mean, they're not bad to have old line companies like Tesla out there. My dig at Elon Musk. Um, old <laughs> line companies like Tesla, but then you have modern companies that are out there like IBM TV that are making it and shaking it, baby. You know, so there, there's there's a big difference between that and um, startups. Also, you know, they, they need support, and we're we're here at IBM TV to give them support to bring them into the twenty uh, first and twenty first. They can read my book, and they can oh. read Kim's book, Startups. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on, on what it takes to be a startup. And, and I will tell you this, one of uh, the big millionaires at the Board of Advisors organization that we went to, he read this, called me up and said it was one of the best books he read and ordered a hundred of them. Now, I've not sold a million like Jim. I love uh -huh. Jim. Uh -huh. but, um, you know, I'm proud that somebody would think that much of my book and, and want to hand them out as gifts. So, um, well, startup for dummies might sell a million. Uh, yeah. That that, that might actually that market. might. But, but, oh, did somebody okay. already write that? Yeah, I mean the th thing is that that's somebody, the I think I already wrote that. That's but. the problem in this crowded universe. You're trying to find your way through the crowded universe, but um, well, startups can also be done internationally today. Uh, I, I believe. Okay, like I said, what we have going on IBM TV. I know that Sharif, who runs the Sharif School of Economics, is having me speak me speak to his group of 300 educators about the trend since COVID-19, especially online education. Now, at Northeastern University, where I've been a professor for 10 years, we've been online for 10 years. We started online. But as we well know, the University of Illinois also has online education through their Master's in Science and Management program and their Master's in Business Administration. And I just see this to be the wave of the, the way of the future is that uh, online education. But there's a lot of resistance from the educational community in that area. And then we're hosting the International Day of Peace on September 21st. Now that's quite interesting because um, war is so much more interesting than peace. Okay. You know, so we're going to have a hard time. Well, there it is. World Peace Day. We're going to get me to shut up. Okay. Okay. So, but, so you mean the political action committee for the pro-war wing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but we have plenty on. of those. Come yeah. on, Bill. Come on, Bill. Let's get real. War, I mean, is, war is more exciting than peace. I mean, when you watch television, more money. No, no, no. Yeah, there you go. Please, at least. Politics during the presidential campaign is more exciting and more entertaining on TV than any war or anything else that we have going on. It's more exciting than COVID. Yeah, but that's um, mud slinging. They're, they sling mud rather than bullets. I mean, but the same, <laughs> the same concept. Okay, either sling mud, sling bullets, but sling something. Or insults. They sling a lot of insults. 
insults. An insult. <laughs> He's getting along with people. I mean, that is that part of our human nature. So yeah. I'm going to have a real problem with this world peace day. But we're sponsoring it, so I guess I got to go. I, I can see back if you if you uh, read the Bible. I don't. I, I'll have to read other uh, history. I consider the Bible a great history book. And if you look back during the first day, I can imagine, you know, um, Adam and Eve's sons, you know, throwing insults at each other. But um, they killed each other. I mean, I'm not kind of like, they, they killed each other. I know four people in population and one fourth of the population committed murder. So you, go. you got to look at those statistics when yeah. you go through history. But I want to change the subject back to startups. That's a good you know, idea. One of the biggest problems <laughs> startups have, one of the biggest problems startups have is what, Nick and Ankit? They don't show cool. up. Oh, they don't show up. Yeah, right. <laughs> Exposure is one of the first things you really need once you get it together and you know what you, where you want to go. You've got your plan together. You need to get out there and get exposure. If you're not going to get out there, then go back to bed. You know, yeah. you know, just go back to bed and get some sleep because it takes a lot of work. You're going to read my book. It's going to take a lot of work. And and you've got to get out there and prod and push. You, this is your significant other. You got to get them off the couch and up and going. You've got to schmooze them. You got to schmooze other people to schmooze them. It takes a lot of work. And um, but sh startups don't show up. Yeah, Next yeah, time yeah. Time a huge event, it, and, it, it, and it, they it, never it. showed up. We had twenty lined up. Two showed up. Yeah, it's, it, it's a okay. But if you think about that, when we did that um, presentation in CES in Las Vegas, okay, out of twenty lined up, two shows up. Ninety percent didn't even show up. The failure rate in startups ninety percent. Ninety percent. The thing is, well, you can expect the show up rate to be about ten percent, and the other ninety percent blow you off. Peter Thiel, who's a chess player, which you know he lives in San Francisco. He's also an attorney, uh, and he also wrote a book called uh, I think it was um, Power of One or something oh, like that. Yeah. Yeah, right. A great book. But if you go read through the chapters, you'll come across his marketing chapter. And he said, he goes, the real problem with the tech guys and startup guys, they underestimate the power of marketing and sales tremendously. They think, I, I invented a better widget, and hence everybody's going to come see me. It is, he goes, that's the biggest failure in the world. And we've seen that with MySpace versus Facebook. MySpace had a huge lead. They were the first out there. And, and they had huge territory. Then they sold to the Wall Street Journal. Big mistake, big company, big hubris, and the Wall didn't Street Journal didn't yeah. know anything about it. Wall Street Journal thought incorrectly that because we're the Wall Street Journal, everybody's going to come see us. Guess what happens? No, it didn't. Mark Zuckerberg kicked their bloody tail through marketing. It mar he should be called not Mark Zuckerberg. He should be called Marketing Zuckerberg because he marketed the bejeevers out of Facebook. So marketing Zucker, Zuckerberg marketed the bejeevers out of Facebook. Why? Um, the Wall Street Journal sat on their name. Hey, we're the Wall Street Journal. And eventually, of course, MySpace. Is anybody here even on MySpace today? I don't know. Another oh, one. It's <laughs> dead. They, they lost seven. They lost seven hundred million dollars because they were too good. They were too big to fail and they failed. I mean, it's just Ridiculous. Go Duke. Well, I mean, another one of my favorites is uh, my pillow, right? The guy got out oh. there and just sells a pillow, right? But mm -hmm. has anyone ever heard of the world's coolest cooler? No. <laughs> no. no. This is weird. But if you go look at a marketing scheme, they, they did a Kickstarter, right? The world's coolest cooler. And um, and I learned a lot from them. So when they went and did their their little first video, it was the guy sitting in a you know yard chair in the back with his cooler sitting next to him, and he raised maybe two hundred dollars. So that wasn't enough for him to manufacture his world's coolest cooler. So somebody said, "Hey, jazz up your video." So he put about thirty k into his video. You can tell. I mean, it's got girls in bikinis sitting on his cooler. It's got the cooler on the back of a speedboat. It's got the cooler blending things. It's you know the cooler does everything. And kid you not, he raised thirty. What was it? Thirty four million. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. and, and right. my nephews had one. So, because uh, when I walked into their hotel, we went to a, a game or something together, and I walked in their hotel room. I go, "Oh no, you got the world's coolest cooler." Uh -huh. so, <laughs> he goes, "Yeah, bikini girls sit on it." <laughs> okay, <laughs> <Sorry>. right. <laughs> Yeah, 
You too can live that life, right? I just ordered two of them. <laughs> Marketing 101. And this is what a, a, a very wealthy man one time told me at a conference that he hired me to come work conferences for him as an engineer. I refuse to skimpy down into those cute little skirts. But, um, and, and we, we'd have fights about this. And he goes, I'm going to tell you something. I will have more men in my booth buying things from me than anyone else here. And I'll spend less money on my booth. And it's because sex sells. That's what he told me. Mm. And yeah, cold hard. I mean, you have to remember what industry I, mm. I okay. took you into. Speaking of that. Um, mm. Hi, Sasha. Yeah. Yes. Marketing. Speaking of investing, we have uh, Sasha Starr, who runs our Sasha. show Investing with Sasha, which I believe is on Hello. Wednesday. Hello. And uh, where he, where he, what day is today? Today's oh, it's Startup Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. And the thing is, Sasha is a very uh, astute investor. And so startups are way down on his list. Way down. Like way down on the list of uh, startup investing. You know, what's but, the uh, problem with this, um, startups, for, in my opinion? The problem is that uh, besides investing money, you also have to invest a lot of your time, sweat, you have running around and uh, schmoozing and uh, doing whatever things. So, well, unless you really enjoy it and you're born entertainer, that's a different story. Then, then you should do exactly that. Um, but if not, then, um, but, but uh, I, I hate to say I, I've done a lot of startups and uh, most of them were successful. And, um, but I, I think it was very special circumstances, very special situations. It cannot be uh, easily uh, translated into overall formula what to do with that. So, um, it's, it, it worked very well in my uh, personal situations, but I don't think it could be replicated. Yeah, and I, I don't think a lot of people can replicate it. In other words, it's just, uh, it's really very, and, and the, the success rate, like I said, is 90% failure, 10% succeed. And um, that's of the ones that get funded by an outside party. Okay. And most of them do not get funded outside party. And if you look at the unicorn rate, it's like one out of a thousand. So it's actually, if you looked at it from an odd standpoint, you would never invest in it. I mean, it's just well, Nick, the numbers Nick, are all I, against I you. I got to say what Peter Thiel was saying is, is spot on because I've worked on boards of startups and a lot of these people um, think that they know everything because they know what they've invented and they do not listen to people telling them, hey, you need marketing, you need sales, hey, you need to get your name out there. You know, they just don't listen to very, very good, solid advice. So that's part of the problem is you got to, you not only have to have a great idea, but you have to surround yourself with people who will tell you what you need to know to become successful. And a lot of them don't. Yeah. And, and the thing is the marketing and sales are extremely important. Jim, because the thing, and that's where I think a lot of them miss out because, hey, I invented something, so what? A lot, a lot of inventions end up in graveyards, and frankly, they're going to be one of them. Now, I'm not really that kind to them because, because of that. Frankly, it's also because it's not like I'm a guy at the diner doing startups. My first bootstrap was back in 1984. You know, but I bootstrapped successfully several million dollar companies. In other words, like one after the next after the next. But I also realized what it takes to do that. Uh, and the thing is, most of the ones I've seen, they don't have they don't have it. And, um, you know, just just and they're exactly what you say. Hey, I invented something. So what? Oh, it's unique. Great. OK, but can you monetize it? Oh, you know, well, yeah. also, Nick, you know, startups have technical problems, which we experience today. And I think we're ready now with uh, Bill's report. Oh, really? Okay, well, well, that made my day because <laughs> I want to find out what's going on in the Tower of Power because yeah. it does affect my it's life. Let's let's see. <laughs> from IBM TV, international broadcast media, this is your report from Washington. Amid the noise of the presidential election, a significant development was overlooked as part of the budget negotiations for the 2021 fiscal year the administration proposed to spend $2.2 billion for research and development of AI and quantum information sciences. In addition, the administration announced an immediate commitment to spend $1 billion over the next five years with money already appropriated to establish 12 new institutes 
also dedicated to AI and quantum information sciences. On the campaign trail, both Trump and Biden are in Wilmington today with very different messages. Trump will be in Wilmington, North Carolina to declare the city a national historic World War II heritage city with a focus on patriotism. Meanwhile, Biden will be in Wilmington, Delaware, outlining a plan for reopening schools and attacking Trump's mishandling of the COVID-19 pan pandemic. Biden is also expected to continue his attacks on Trump's failure to denounce violence. On the money trail, Biden announced that his campaign raised over $300 million and counting in the month of August. The Trump campaign has not announced their fundraising totals for August. Your political forecast for the rest of this week and into your weekend calls for torrential political rhetoric from both sides. In other news, uh, the comprehensive COVID-19 relief package negotiations witnessed another significant development. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin joined the chorus of voices from the administration to restart negotiations. Mnuchin testified before Congress on Tuesday that he was ready to sit down and negotiate. He indicated that he intends to call speak the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, today. This comes on the heels of reports from various economists who are warning of a double dip recession, one which will compound the pandemic based recession we are currently facing. The leading indicators cited are expected mass job losses in the coming weeks, business failures from the current recession, and across the board declines in spending by all industries. In addition, primary, prior temporary layoffs are being converted into permanent layoffs and the rising rate of long-term structural unemployment, a flashback to the economic indices of the 2008 economic crisis. In addition, both sides are continuing discussions on funding bills to avoid a government shutdown in four weeks. Next, Facebook announced that it has discovered new Russian attempts to influence the 2020 election. Separately, in Los Angeles, D. John Kizzy, a black man, was shot by police. Details are currently unavailable, but Mr. Kizzy will now become a part of this political campaign season. And the White House has announced that the White House tours will resume on September 12th this year, the day after nationwide 9-11 memorials. Finally, the current COVID death toll from John Hopkins University is over 184,697 American souls lost with no end in sight. That is your report for this day, September 2nd, 2020, from IBM TV, International Broadcast Media. Smart television for a smarter global community. From dictatorships, to democracies around the world. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. I'm Bill Trezevant. That was a good report. And I, I actually, actually, you know, Bill, um, in my office in Salt Lake City, where, where I run my all the pensions that we run around the country. Every week we discuss what's going on in the other Washington because you guys can buy one line item, literally put us out of business. Right. And um, and we've seen some issues like that before, the Washington DC Tower of Power. But something that I found very interesting is the billions they're going to AI and billions right. they're going to. Okay, but here's the reality of it. On Startup Wednesday, you, your small companies aren't gonna get any of that money. Okay, it's gonna right. go watch. It'll go to all the big well-known names and here's my protest against your friend Elon Musk. And I know you love Elon over in Jim over in, in Silicon Valley. And people complain about the taxes, they're gonna tax the rich. Elon Musk, the reason part of the reason he's rich is he got a government contract from NASA to develop right. SpaceX. In other words, these people suck off the government on one side and then don't want to pay taxes on the other side. It's pathetic, it's disgusting, and it goes on all the time. In other I words, know. I, I know. <laughs> you know? Uh, to, uh, with the uh, investment in AI and uh, quantum information sciences, you have to think about it in two different ways. First, uh, the uh, administration is investing immediately $1 billion that they plan to spend over the next five years to create 12 different institutes around the United States. Now, um, those institutes obviously will, will be able to partnership 
or partner with uh, smaller business entities, whoever is the, the leading edge. But it's the longer term, the 2.2 billion that's currently being proposed uh, by the uh, administration in the current funding thing, uh, funding uh, negotiations. Now, the question becomes, and this is why everything's still uncertain, it's all gonna depend on who wins you know, the election. So the administration can propose 2.2 billion now, and you're right, if, it, if that holds true and everything else being equal, it might've gone the way of say an Elon Musk or yeah. Boeing or Orbital uh, TAC, which is a major uh, space military industrial uh, company. But it could be true that uh, that $2.2 billion, once it's uh, approved, and if it's under, uh, say, a Biden administration, you'd have very different policymakers in charge of what they're going to do. And so maybe they will hear your uh, clarion call to say, uh, let's look out for the little guy and, you know, let's stop uh, funding Elon Musk, sending cars into space. Yeah. So, well, I, I mean, the thing is that, that, that they don't look at like the G, GTF uh, co coefficient, which is basically saying that there's very little mobility right now in the United States. In other words, the people, if you're born in the lower classes, you're going to stay in the lower classes, you're not going to move up. And the thing is, that's been happening in the U.S. for the last uh, several decades since the Reagan administration, by the way, who developed this trickle down theory. And mm -hmm. so the, the, the mobility of wealth and uh, middle classes in the United States is very, very poor. In other words, the opportunities here, you know, people have to really reconsider uh, what, what's available for people today. It's skewed toward the 1%. And part of it is because, like I said, they're going to get the government contract. And then they're going to complain about the taxes that they have to pay because they're astronomically wealthy. You know, Nick, that, that's an excellent point. However, I, and I think you begin to see the uh, underpinnings of uh, the, the counter school of thought, even in uh, the protests, say, Black Lives Matter. So if you take the, your thought that says we've got to you know, reinforce the middle class, when they start uh, talking about defund the police, they're actually talking about changing our budgetary uh, policies and priorities. Oh, and sure. It. And so that's well, changing the legislator's mindset about where we are allocating money right. moving right. forward. Well, and, well, 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 and I, I can see the point because like, like this big war on drugs, okay, this is where yeah. who, the, Breonna Taylor got killed because they were looking for drugs. Okay, I mean, this, this is a ridiculous, stupid policy that was invented by the Reagan administration. We have a war on drugs, okay, to yes, save people's know. lives. To yes, save people's know. lives. And what they did, what they ended up doing is they ended up killing a lot of people, creating a lot more crime, uh, making uh, tremendous problems uh, in, in the uh, community rather well, than saying, up, let's. And look, filling up prisons and also. And filling up prisons. In other words, smokers rather than violent criminals. Yeah, it, it is an incredibly stupid policy that was designed by the Reagan administration that still exists in the United States today. We have Weed Wednesday coming on to counter that, all these people in prison for life. Would you do? Oh, I smoked a joint. Yes, what did what they, they, they go after Miss Taylor for? Oh, she was dealing drugs. Listen, listen, morons, okay? It is not worth killing people because they're dealing drugs. Who right. bloody cares? But they just don't get it. And for some reason, the spokesmen out there don't really deliver that message hard and fast and the politics politicians aren't behind it. But the whole criminal justice system revolving around drugs is basically wrong. It should be eliminated. And the thing is, um, and we still haven't done that today. It just drives me nuts. And, and so the thing is her death, yes, it was preventable. And who caused it? Ronald Reagan, but he's dead. Well, how did he cause it? He had nothing to do with it. Because the policy that he passed right. is war on drugs that really goes after the lower class community and puts them all in jail. I mean, it's just. Right. You know, I got a heavy question to ask. Do other countries have the problem with drugs that our country seems to have more of? And I wish Ben were here so that he could answer this. He could defend the United Kingdom. Or oh, well, Britain. not just defend him, but I am curious. I'm That's sure it's question. in other places. But is it just where we are more privileged, um, you know, more of a, a first world nation that we have this kind of problem or is it everywhere well, else we, we can go to australia go and see what happens down under i know they hoard yeah, toilet paper there <laughs> maybe, maybe they hoard drugs. where are the drug cartel where's the no, toilet oh, paper we've cartel got safe, safe injecting houses and uh <laughs> wow. wait, wait. You, you have what? What, what do you what, what do you say I mean, really? we're injecting houses we have safe injecting houses are you are you kidding me or are you serious? 
I, I'm it's serious. serious. So, so um, you mean, so you mean the state has set up an operation where individuals who need a fix will go to yep. uh, a me, uh, is it a medical facility or is it just more like a cocktail lounge? It's a oh. community community driven facility. Okay, so well, I, mean, what, I, t I tell you what, man, you go down everybody's under. Everybody's going to be going to Australia. <laughs> hey, hey, mate, mate, you, mate, you live, mate, you live in a foreign country. That's all I can tell you. That okay, <laughs> down under is down different. Well, hey, you know, I've got some questions for Bill um, because you know your your reports are marvelous, but there was some big news that you didn't mention, and I want to make sure that we do cover it um, because um, there was a, a book out yesterday. Uh, uh, Trump versus the United States by a Pulitzer Prize winning uh, award reporter, uh, Michael Schmidt. And um, he talked about last November, uh, Trump yeah. was whisked away yeah. to Walter Reed Hospital. And um, he didn't say why. He said the re it re remains a mystery. But Pence was put on notice that he might be going under anesthesia and he would Pence might be president for the period of time that uh, Trump was not available. So this is this was not news, of course. He was whisked away, and uh, uh, nobody was talking about it. And so he puts out this book. And um, so Twitter world yesterday was filled with Trump's denials. I never had a mini stroke. Now the mini stroke was never mentioned in Michael Schmidt's book. That's correct. And so why are you denying something that wasn't even reported? Well. Okay. Well, yes, uh, that was in the book. Yes, uh, I did not include that in the report. Um, the uh, it would have been news had uh, President Trump died. I would have included that in the report. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Uh, well, well uh, thank, thank you, Bill, for reporting. Wow. Okay. okay. He has he has standards. Yeah. Okay. He, he has his journalistic standards. If they yeah. die, I'll report. Back guideline. Um, <laughs> However, uh, with President Trump, you're absolutely right. And what's interesting about it, just to put it in context, uh, it's this, is that uh, Trump has uh, an incessant need to deny what he thinks are failures. For example, uh, but before we kind of look more or drill down on this one, we have to remember back when he gave the speech, uh, I believe at the Naval Academy uh, at the graduation, and he was walking down the ramp and he looked um, frail. And he blamed it on the railings and then said he could walk and then everything else, as well as his inability to raise a glass right. uh, to grab a, a drink of water. And so everybody saw that on the video. And then he followed up with, with all kinds of uh, Twitter responses, denying such things in a very heavy way, even though we saw it on video and knew it was true. Now, we fast forward. It alludes to some sort of medical procedure that the vice president would have been put on notice in case of an emergency if he had to go under. And then suddenly Trump comes out and raises the specter, I did not have a series of mini heart attacks. And reading through the tea leaves and based on the, our prior uh, collective experience, that would seem to suggest that it is true. Um, exactly. I'm just denying it, but you can't put um, a he said, he said in, in a report that goes around, the, goes around the globe, Jim. But I apologize, yeah. but we are on it. But it was news, and it was it was in the tr Twitter, which is a global uh, community yeah. as well, where his denials actually make you think, oh, it may be true. Yeah. And maybe he did have many strokes. Okay, okay. And my, my thing is, so what? President uh, Pence, is, do you guys have a problem with that? I mean, I mean, that's the reason we have yeah. this system. It's just like uh, my Republican friends goes, oh, Joe Biden, he's up in the air as he could die. Okay, so you have Kamala Harris. Well, so we're what? coming up with yeah. an election, and this guy may have been yeah. suffering many strokes. Don't you think that well, might well, be? Well, no. No, I mean, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not prejudiced due to person's age. I mean, they, 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 I hear the same thing from the Republicans. They, they, they whack Joe Biden. Oh, he's too old. He's going to die in office. You know, he's got Alzheimer's disease, all other stuff so bloody what okay no, we don't we, have ageism i agree with that yeah we don't i mean pe pe listen listen right. people get but, people get old people get anyway. sick people get died. but strokes or mini strokes or whatever are not a function of age my dad had one in his 50s so you know this is news okay if you want to factor it into your election decision, then you need to factor it in on both sides, okay? Well, in other well, words, if Biden had a series of mini strokes, we'd be reporting that, I would gentlemen, think. Gentlemen. Yes. Ah. Now, now, can, can we just get back to the AI issue? 
Um, <laughs> oh, I have no, noticed no, go, a lot of AI happening okay, in let's Australia go ahead, too. Well, like full screen. Yeah, we, we, accelerator we program. Hey, we need to move that to the political program. When does that start? Yeah, hey, I wasn't so, done. I've got a series of questions. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, is this well let's hear what who, Willie has who, to say about who, AI. Yeah. In, if I join uh, and I've got an AI concept and I join an AI accelerator, who owns the intellectual property? Does the accelerator take on because they're funding it? And wow, uh, do, do they grab part of the? It depends. You know, it, because it, it, be, it, be, it, you're just talking about you, you get a law degree AI funding. You get a law degree, Willie Hill, called JD. It says just depends. Okay, that, <laughs> and it really it just depends on what agreement you or have. Just with that <laughs> yeah. In other words, right. what agreement do you have with the uh, AI accelerator? Okay, and you can at that point in time, of course, transfer or maintain intellectual property rights. And it, it's one of the big things in media is obviously copyrights and trademarks you get bandered around by that. And so, and uh, you're going to do that in, in um, and artificial intelligence as well when you if you join another group and you bring your intellectual property there, you better make sure you have a good lawyer on board who actually maintains the intellectual property rights that you may give up when you press the button. And uh, when you press the button, a lot of people today don't know that with Facebook and all the big wigs out there that are in social media, that you press a button that basically gives up your intellectual property rights. But they always say, yeah. press also, the button to proceed. Also, this is the sport of kings that you're talking about. Uh, trademarking because I've just done some trademarking and it's expensive and so startups are cash poor usually and they're thinking well maybe I don't need a lawyer yeah you need a lawyer always right. need a lawyer and let me add a little bit to this if you're gonna go out and start looking at inventing something today of course I've finished mine it took me 10 years <laughs> to get the patent pushed through and that costs a lot of money and then you got to talk about trademarking and and just protecting the intellectual property and defending it will cost thousands and thousands of dollars but NASA has a patent database of a lot of patented ideas, including uh, artificial intelligence and technology. These items are already patented. They're open for people to go through and make a, a deal with them yeah, to use them in their businesses. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I, I probably need to be careful because every big corporation now is going to send their attorneys over there to dig through it. But if you watch our NASA interview, Nick and I interviewed the gentleman that was head of that department. It will kind of walk you through where you need to go, who you need to visit uh, to do this. But this does exist. And there's thousands. I mean, who, who else would have any bigger patent files than NASA, right? And NASA has all of these patents that they're saying, hey, just go through them. And if there's something there you want to use, negotiate with us and you can use it. Now that's not going to cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars to one get it patented and two to protect it because let me tell you what just to hire the attorneys to defend your patent when somebody's trying to steal it it starts out your retainer fee that day is twenty thousand dollars that doesn't even get you to court the sport of kings it's it is just, yes. it, it, it is as a matter of fact the university of new hampshire which used to be known as the franklin pierce college of law swung their entire law school into intellectual property. So if you happen to, and I'm trying to get the dean on because I've watched her make this move where the whole university is intellectual property oriented because the latest and greatest property grab is intellectual property. And and um, it's what, like Kim said, she, she spends 10 years just to, to develop a patent and you can become patent poor. You spend all your time developing a patent. <laughs> okay. yeah. And I got this big, it's just like this. You could be real estate rich. I had clients that had $10 million in real estate. I said, okay, so what do you live off of? Oh, peanut butter sandwiches. I said, but you're worth 10 million. You got $10 million worth of real estate in Florida, right along the beach. What's going on? He goes, well, it's raw land. It doesn't develop any income. So we live off social security and I eat peanut butter sandwiches. Okay. In intellectual property, the same way you can have a huge patent and you become patent poor, it's extremely valuable. But the problem is you've got to get it to market and then you've got to distribute it and monetize it. And, and you're not talking chicken feed. You're talking tens of millions of dollars 
And, and, Nick, and that's the name of the game. Nick, we have and a lot of people come on here and say, we're, I'm against regulations. Regulations are bad for business. Well, this is a barrier to innovation. These, the, the need to come out and get these lawyers, pay these lawyers to do trademarks, to do patents. And this, this is why I call it the sport of kings, because it's you got to be a king to afford it. And the idea that this is a barrier to intervention is never mentioned by these people who are, say, uh, reduce regulation. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Are you telling me my legal fees are the barrier to your innovation, Mr. Eid? I am telling that the system that we have set up, the policies that have been made that cause me to pay an extraordinary amount of money get, to get my ideas trademarked are a problem that we should be addressing. So oh, well, I don't mind you making okay. money off of this, Nick, okay. but I don't want to be paying you that money. Well, okay. That well, I mean, honestly, we, we, we have we have two lawyers who sit on the bench who don't both disagree, but uh, with the payment. Part. Okay. okay. The rest of it, I can. Okay. 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 The rest of the part, uh, Jim. I can honestly, Bill, what do you have to say? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, uh, I took an oath of office uh, to my fellow attorneys, and uh, there's a famous quote by uh, Abraham Lincoln that says, uh, you know, your time is your dollar. So. I don't know. Uh, it is a barrier, Jim, but you can't blame it on the lawyers for doing it. And, you know, I don't think I was. Yeah. Yeah. But, but uh, the, the, barrier and it starts with the lawyers. I mean, at, at the same time, what you're doing when you're applying for a trademark, a copyright or a patent, you're asking the legal system of the world to defend your idea and make it your exclusive property, a monopoly that supersedes anybody else's. Okay, and you think you're gonna get that done for free? Did I say that, Nick? No, you didn't. Okay, no. but the <laughs> thing is, the thing is, and I I agree with you on everything you said, except paying the lawyer should be the priority as opposed to the other way around. Well, so, <laughs> I, think that, you know, I think the invention so, should be barrier free as much as possible. Lawyers should get paid. You know, everybody yeah. should get paid. But, you know, why not? Why are we having these innovative ideas stopped in their tracks because I can't afford to do it? Well, oh, because, so, no, so here's another way that you could do it. A lot of the people that do open source, right? And they just said, you know what, I'm going to build this and I'm going to share my knowledge with someone else and hopefully it will feed back to me. And and, and in many cases, it never fed back to the originator. I know, I know the originator of Google Glasses. All right. So this is what I have to say to some of those people, the big dogs who try to steal your ideas. I know the innovator, the originator of Google Glasses and Google Glasses, nothing against Google, but they basically stole it from him and he made a deal with them because he couldn't fight very big. Right. He just made a deal with him. Fine. Just give me credit for inventing it and I'll move on to something else. So that's what they, so his name is there. So he moves on to something else. So this is, this is what an entrepreneur is, right? So Google has this patent and what he wrote up to that point, but they have no further development. And have you ever seen Google glasses go any further than that? Right. No, 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 no. Okay. He went to another glass company and made the next generation, which was far greater, far better. You still never heard about it because they're very expensive, uh -huh. but he also made the next set of gaming glasses that just kicked awesome. the world. Okay. So he, it was all up here and here. And this is what I tell people, people can take your IP and they can have the money and they can go out to market before you. But in many cases, they're not going to have the intellectual property, which is this and this to make it what it really needed to be. Just like everybody wants to try to steal my idea and they think they can make it better. They can't. They think they can make it cheaper and all they do is end up killing people. So there, there, there has, this is, the, this is what I tell the students when I, I speak at graduations, this is your intellectual property. This is the first intellectual property you have. The second is that piece of paper you get. All right. And nobody can take those two things away from you. And after that, anybody can take anything away from you. Even if you get it patented, trademark, Nick, you know this, even if you get it patented, trademark, anything, people can still steal it from you. And there are patents. If you, if you don't do the patent, right, it's not patented all over the world. It's just here. That's in the right. US. That's right. But, but, but you, we talked you about actually... 90 percent of startups failing, right? And yeah. we talked about them not showing up, right? Well, right. let's talk about some of the other barriers 
that they face. Like they've got to get the right patent lawyer. They've got to pay that patent lawyer the appropriate amount of money. Now that's a barrier. So, you know, we can't just say it's because they don't show up. There's a lot of hurdles that are in their way to get well, the I, innovation operating. And the guy you described, Kimberly, is one in a million. He's There's not a whole oh, lot yeah. of guys like that. Well, the thing is, is there, there's, somebody tried to steal one of my ideas many years ago. Well, you're one but, in a million too. And, and here's what's funny. I had it, you know, we were supposed to partner and they decided they're going to go off and do it themselves. And it was my idea. And I did have the contracts in place, but I said, screw it. You know what? They're going to fail because I didn't put everything down in the paperwork that they needed. So one of my buddies called me up and he says, Kim, oh my God, they're stealing your idea. No, they're not going to make it work. So they did. They ran with it for a year and they failed. And of course they blame me that it failed, right? Oh, it was a stupid idea anyway. But no, you just didn't have all the idea. Right. So, so here's the thing. Um, but there are ways you can do it, Jim. There's, there's a thing called the poor man's patent. If you read my book, I, I share with people a lot of ways. It's a small book with a lot crammed in there, but there's the poor man's patent. All right. And, and it does work in many cases. You write up all of your ideas and, and um, certify mail it to yourself and don't open it. Um, contracts, right? MNDAs and contracts with people. Do inventors agreements with people before you talk with them. So there are many ways to protect yourself. And these are, are forms that you can get that you don't have to pay a lot of money for that you could probably just Google and get them. Or read my book and and negotiate, you know, work with me a little bit, and, and I'll help you get them. These are things I've learned and experienced. Mm -hmm. Or or, or take take an intellectual property law course. I mean, why aren't you taking one course? Right. Yeah, when I'm busy inventing my idea, I have time for that. Come on, Nick. You, I don't, didn't, I, didn't you I, take? I, wait, 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 Jim. Didn't you take intellectual <laughs> property, copyrights, trademarks, and patents when you were in high school? Uh, no, I. Why I not? Miss that. Yeah, maybe they do. Yeah, but the thing is, you should have taken a copy. Every, you can't patent. expect every nine out of ten people to have taken that course. You can't expect nine out of ten people to have read your book. Yes, there are ways around this. I agree. Yeah, it, it's but our expectations are nine out of ten people don't show up. No, yeah. nine out of ten people face no. obstacles that we don't cover well, here. Well, here's the thing: nine out of ten people want instant gratification. They want things given to them. They want it to happen without them doing any due diligence. I don't believe it's nine out of ten. I do believe I there is a percentage of people just like that. A lot of people want all the work done for them and not. But if you get up and you go network, right? You have an idea, then you start going to that industry. This is what I tell everybody. Get up and go to the industry networking. Go to the startup networking programs. They're not all honest people, but there are some there. Learn to learn to use your gut a little bit. But get out there and learn about it. Don't sit and wait for somebody to come and do it or share your idea with one person and go, oh, and, and, and I want to tell you what, a lot of people that you share your idea with, they're going to put it down. I don't care. And then some of them are going to put it down. They're going to go do it. Yes. So, right. so, <laughs> they'll put it down and they're going to do it. They do. Oh, that has oh happened my God. It's really has that happened. Yeah. I caught somebody who actually took my patent verbatim and filed it out of Waco, Texas. And don't believe I'm not going to go and, and face them head on when I get back on my feet again. Because no. I will. Because these are people who will just take your idea and think they can run with it. So you, you got to stand your ground a little bit, but sometimes you just got to run a little harder, a little faster. And then sometimes you just got to accept when the wind is just too much for you. But, but there, I, I will tell you this, there are a lot of people with great ideas. I, I can't count the time I hear people go, I thought of that. I thought of that. Right. Well, why didn't you do something with it? Right. Okay, yeah, it's a brilliant well, idea. He's making millions, and, and you don't no. have to work. You don't have to work all the time, Jim. You Let's don't have let to Bill work get a word in. No, no. Actually, I was simply going to offer this observation, and that is that uh, here in Washington, we wake up every day collectively as a city, thinking we have all the brand new ideas for the world. Just <laughs> oh, there's no no innovation in San Francisco. It's all in Washington. I, I'm looking forward to the day that the government shuts down and we reboot and clean out all of the bad people and we start over because we've had the same two ball teams for centuries with the same 
players for decades and it's time to get new people. Why don't we start with term limits? Okay. Are you, are you, are you going to bomb Washington, D.C.? Is that what you're suggesting, Kim? No. See, <laughs> a bomb. I, really wish, I really wish people would stop reading Shakespeare because he wrote, let's start by killing all the lawyers. I mean, I, 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 <laughs> that was the I reason I don't read Shakespeare. He doesn't read Shakespeare. Yes. I don't read Shakespeare. I hate I that guy. I, I feel like he's I feel dead. Like he's buried. I feel he's like medieval. He's not, not medieval. relevant today. Oh no! Medieval right. and medieval. Right. Yeah. Well, Go ahead, no, no. I, I feel like an endangered uh, law enforcement division, and therefore Trump should be uh, defending me on the stump. Um, but actually, well, I did have a question, and and uh, I know I've been uh, cracking jokes. But Willie, uh, hey. you have uh, you know helped, assisted, and been a coach to many startups. How do you see startups in the AI and or quantum sciences field? Uh, that's a totally new field. Uh, one of the things I'm gathering, and I'm a bit hesitant because I'm going to use FinTech and I'm going to use AI as my backbone. Uh, the trick with this whole thing is not inventing the data for AI but use legislation, what is legislated. So in that context, I'm not uh, stealing anybody's copyright content. I'm using legislation. Legislation belongs to the government, okay? When they make a financial uh, legislation, okay, all financial planners need to be cover this content. So I take that content, feed it into AI, and say, this is the premise that you're going to work from. Okay, and then work through that. That way, I'm not stealing anybody's uh, intellectual property because it's a government uh, legislated document. Mm -hmm. huh. Okay, that I, I, I'm not stealing anybody's things. And use that and use AI to benefit society. So yeah. the only place where I'm tripping up, and thank you, Kimberly, for saying open source, because yeah, in okay. part of this whole thing is uh, you have a deal room where... I'm there, I've put my pitch, I've put my due diligence and all of that content, and uh, this is what I'm looking for, and my pitch uh, deck, and but at the same time have the investors look at that, and me being able to look at the investor and say, okay, this guy has money to invest in this, because this is what he has, and there's transparency on both sides of the uh, table, as opposed to pitching to an investor, and not knowing anything about the investor and just sitting here, hopefully that he comes on board, uh, which nine times out of 10 doesn't happen. Okay, well, I, that's interesting. And uh, Sasha, do you invest in startups and AI? And I mean, if, uh, if Willie brought one of his clients to you, how would you look at the situation? Uh, I would uh, thank him. Uh, I would wish him a lot of luck and uh, all the best in this world. However, I, I miss one point though. When Egyptians built their pyramids or Leonardo da Vinci painted his Mona Lisa, how did they go about copyrights and patents and everything else? They've just created uh, such enormous pieces of art that they didn't need any people to uh, consult with them, the lawyers, the, government officials, they just didn't need anything, and they created uh, the incredible work, works of art. So all this fight here with all those little patents and the enforcement of the patents and all that stuff, that uh, registration of a patent and fight for its patent and enforcement of a patent and try to steal the patent, it's altogether worth much more than the patent itself. The only thing is that it's not being willed all at once. It goes by parts. First, they will take your hand, then they will take your leg, then they will take your your uh, ear, then they will take it. Whenever you will have left nothing, then they will say, you know what? You should have done this and that, and your patent was not properly uh, registered or written out or whatever. Well, next time, good luck to you. Bye bye. So. <laughs> So you just uh, don't understand what's the pleasure of uh, investing in stocks when you don't need patents, you don't uh, have to fight for anything. And listen, um, I had one chess program 
uh, with a few grandmasters, and then the program they went on to admit they are all in it for money only. There is nothing but money. So all these patterns and inventions and everything else is all about money. People want to do as little as possible to make as much as possible. So go out. There are trillions of dollars traded every single day in a stock. If you're so smart and clever, go there and prove who you are and what you are. If not, go back to your coach and try ask your money to give you a tea, and that's the end of story. <laughs> okay. okay. That. Okay, so so that 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 does it, guys from the startup community. Willie, it was great seeing you. Now we know what to do. Um, you know, tell, tell them to all go back, and if they're really great and they're really smart, go invest in um, the stock market. And then we've heard heard from Sasha, Jim, all you guys in Silicon Valley. You might as well go back home and just invest in the stock market. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day. Yeah, here's what I think too. I think uh, Willie Is my bleeding. I just want what? to know. Is my tongue lady? bleeding? Because I've been biting it. I, 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 I don't know. You know. <laughs> You've know. you been biting your tongue, uh, Jim? Hey, let's let's kind of take a look at some things, though. Uh, Nick and I were having this conversation the other day that there's a lot of money under the table right now. Well, not under the table, but that's sitting there still. There is a lot of cash a lot of money in sitting the market. Still, just Day doing nothing. Yes. And now yeah. the time to step up to the plate and put it back into the economy. And the best places to put money back into the economy is at the bottom. And I'm talking about the bottom is the startups. Let the money circulate. Even if the startup fails, you know, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but you're putting money into something that's putting money into something else that's, you know, they're going to spend money. That sounds and socialist. Yes, it does. But <laughs> oh, you, you, Kim, you do know what we do as socialist on the. Oh no! Here we go. <laughs> I, <laughs> I can't do that to her. Um, but anyway, uh, so Nick, you know I don't mind. But yeah. the the thing is, is that. Um, but here's the thing: it's socialist in the sense if the government was doing it. I'm not asking the government to do this. I am asking the people who are sitting on all that money to recirculate it back into society. OK, and there's many ways to do this to even protect your money. But if you're just sitting on your money and it's not doing anything for you anyway, we have always been taught to let your, your money work for you. Of course, that took me a while to learn how to do, too. I'd rather put my money in the mattress like Sasha does. Um, <laughs> I just bought the new one, actually. You, know, wait, 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 you, you bought a new one. bigger one. one. <laughs> He's got more money than you bought. So now I have two mattresses. big. He's got the extra pillow too, the pillow top. But um, and but the thing is, is that I think that if we gave um, some sort of tax program to these people that are sitting on all of this money, re-engage it back into society. I look at the UN and what they're doing, or the UK and what they're doing. The UK where Ben's at, they're giving vouchers to their people to go eat. I think that that serves many purposes. Isn't that a They're government not, program? Yes, it is a government. The government spends you know millions of dollars each week. They give vouchers to their, the people to go eat at restaurants, right. right? You have to take them to a restaurant, but now you're, you're what? You're circulating money. That, right. that restaurant has to what? Spend money to what? Feed people. People are getting fed that probably wouldn't get fed. Some people are going hungry and then families are going out and engaging and doing something with their families. So there, it's really kind of rejuvenating the economy. Um, and it takes more than one voucher. It takes more than one week. This is something that's going to take many weeks. And everybody, again, they expect, expect this instant gratification, like we're going to fix this overnight. And we're not. We, we, you have to remember, this is a broken bone. OK, a broken bone does not fix itself overnight or in six weeks when, after you get the cast off, because then you have to recover. Right. You have to learn how to move that broken bone again. So that's where I think we are. But I think it needs to go back into the startup community. More incubators need to come up, uh, more accelerators. Will get in? Let's get a startup accelerator going um, and get that money loosened from these people. Let them, you know, I think it's going to make them constipated, excuse me, but it is. It's constipating our society. Yeah, but, but it's going to be real tough because the, the investors are 
lot like Sasha and the people that are doing this. Okay, the people that are doing uh, the startups are like what he says. He asks them, what are you in it for? I'm in it for the profit. Are you in it for because it's your passion? Are you in it because, because it's for the profit? A lot of people are not in it for their passion uh, and to change the world. That sounds good and it's something that you will cookie, you, you know, you'll coat over like cake but a lot of them are in it for the profit. In other words, they're looking for the um, almighty dollar at the end of the day. At least that's what Alexander Starr said, but I would yeah. concur with them. He also says something else is when you tell the, you're asking the people to do this, to funnel the money back, uh, Sasha would tell you that's going against human nature. And well, uh, yeah, I, 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 but I would agree. No, you need a agree with human, program I like the UK agree is doing. Human. To put the money in the people's there's hands. There's an issue with people who just look for profit. It has been proven that people who look specifically for profit at the end are nine times out of ten fiddle the figures in the books. Yeah. Okay. That, that, that's a, that's a pretty good stat too. You know, the thing so, is, I, I think, Willie, it's that when you're looking at startups, are you looking at, is this their passion? Is this something they that they would do whether they got paid or not? It's okay. Or, Come with me and I give, you a near death, I give you a near-death experience and you'll get the passion. Right. Yes. You have a nice but button. I get think Willie is on. <laughs> I think he's really on to something yeah, because he's, he's holding their hands every step of the way. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. But okay. It, it, and if it's too focused on the that. money, I'm I'm going to sort of slap him around the head. I said, "Hey, this is not how you do it. Whack, whack, right. whack. <laughs> Wake up." Yeah. Yeah. Because because the thing is, if you have a passion for it, you'll get it done. Because seriously, Absolutely. you can you can develop a million dollar business by only working half a day. Easy. In other words, and I Absolutely. tell everybody, all you have to do is work half a day, and you'll be a millionaire. And they go, "Well, how do you do that? Well, you you start to work at nine, you finish up at nine every day, and you'll become a millionaire." But most people are not willing to do that. Or you start at six in the morning, you finish at six at night. You got you work your twelve, your basic twelve to eighteen hour day. Every person I've seen, almost everyone, that have million dollar plus incomes work ten to eighteen hour days. This nine to five stuff ain't going to cut it. You know, if That's you want to be a seven figure income, I, I you know, really agree with that, Nick. Yeah, but, because yeah. And, and and they don't get it because they go, well, you know, um, I got stuff to do, and also, well, you can't. Okay, you, you if you want to be successful, you're working, you know, working 12 hour days, not uh, nine to five. If and you, you want a regular job, work nine to five. Pardon? You don't have time for a law course. And when you're doing that, you got your head down, you're following your passion. You know, yeah. you're not you're yeah. going to have certain skills. You're not yeah. going to. Have but remember, remember the first rule, Jim, pay the lawyer. Oh, speaking of lawyer, Robert Soprano has arrived. Oh my now God. we're ganging up on oh, you guys. A good lawyer. Oh. Yes, we have our attorney from Italy. Yes, oh, we're, we're, right. we're, Long time no see for me. We were good talking good. about paying lawyers, and I'm starting to get, get Jim convinced. The number one thing when he wakes up in the morning is to, he puts on his list, make sure lawyers get paid. Okay. Capital then, preservation, number then, one, two, and three. And his life will, will be better. And we decided that William Shakespeare will no longer be mentioned on IBM TV because he's made <laughs> derogatory <laughs> comments about attorneys. And we're not going to support William Shakespeare and his derogatory way of life. And I don't read Shakespeare because of that, because it's he's very. <laughs> so, um, you know, isn't he the one that wrote The World is My Oyster, right? He writes a lot, a lot of bad things, and so, so we're not. We're all the world's a stage. We you know why that. that was written. Everybody thinks that's a good phrase. You know well, why well, that. Was well, look, look, look. Okay, Shakespeare sold violence and bad thoughts. Yes, okay, I will not read. It. I mean, come on, <laughs> bad <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> Kill the lawyers. I mean, uh, no, no. Are you saying Shakespeare? Listen. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 where's my? Are, are you saying Shakespeare? Okay. Was a muckraker. Yes, Shakespeare was a muckraker. Are you saying he engaged Absolutely. in yellow journalism? He was a muckraker. Absolutely. With allegations. I, 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 I literally yeah. have, I burned all his books back there. They're burned. Okay, okay they well, were, they're not well, allowed I in the house. I have not complete Shakespeare. I don't know if I'm there yet, but a muckraker. Wow. Yes. Okay, and, and Shakespeare made some very derogatory comments to the best profession in the world. He goes, first thing, kill all lawyers. I mean, who could make such a statement except a dead medieval evil guy, William Shakespeare? 
dead medieval and evil. Get rid of them. Anybody who's listening to this, if you have Shakespeare books, we'll have a Shakespeare book. How come our tax code is so complicated? Right, 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 right. I need a lawyer to understand it. Okay. Well, there's our segue to our new Italian attorney. How would you yeah. handle Shakespeare? How would you handle Shakespeare? Mm, burning him. Maybe. <laughs> there, there we go. But, but you know, but you, you know, I mean, you know, the problem is that uh, from an Italian point of view, if I get rid of Shakespeare, I still have a problem because maybe one of the most famous uh, um, books in Italy, which is uh, basically taught in, ev in every school, I hope still, which is uh, which is uh, called the Promessi Sposi, the Promise, uh, uh, whatever, for, from from Alessandro Manzoni, which is considered as the biggest romance uh, ever written in Italian, the worst figure and the worst character of the complete book, and you have people killing each other uh, during during the the years of the, of the of, of the past and, and so and so on, and the worst character ever is the lawyer. I mean, yeah, it's a it, 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 guy. The, 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 oh, funny thing, the funny thing is that basically they speak about the lawyer not more than 10, 10 pages of the book, but he's greedy, he's lazy, he only wants to get uh, money or something out of it. And he basically when when the guy asks, because I mean the story is this, place, is this these two young kids which want to marry and, and the, the evil uh, landlord or the evil... Uh, like the sheriff of Nottingham doesn't want them to, to, to marry. He wants to marry the girl and so on, so on, so on. And, and like basically, it. yeah, it's more or less like Romeo and Juliet. It's a little bit more complex. But uh, and and basically, oh. uh, the the kid goes to the lawyer to ask him if, if he can be somehow uh, if he has some legal ground. And basically, there's this scene where he goes to to the lawyer, and the only way to get an uh, advice from the lawyer is to bring him to the uh, to uh, basically to um, chicken so he goes to the to the lawyer with the two chicken in his hand and and and, and the guy when he when the guy discovers that basically uh, the person who's um, trying to uh, disrupt the marriage is the landlord and the, the local boss basically he he uh, basically uh, starts saying no, you can't, uh, and so and so and so, so, so. So basically, it's the worst. It's the worst character of the complete. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I totally agree with you. Another Italian okay. author, and and it was okay, wait, wait, wait. Andy Dante, and Dante had a series of of levels of the Inferno. And where would the lawyers be? Uh, I mean that that that's, that's oh, not because the, also Dante puts the lawyers somewhere in in the inferno, in the in uh, yeah in the uh, in hell, and I think round about well, the hell has basically seven stages, and and we are basically some somewhere around the seventh. Basically. Okay, okay, wait, wait, Roberto. In all due respect, Dante, that was a typographical error, as we well know. But what we do know about Shakespeare, he was a fraud. He wrote a book called The Merchants of Venice. He's never been to Venice. He's not Italian. And he writes a whole book. And he writes a book on Verona. He writes a book on uh, all these and places. And Marlowe might have written some of okay, those plays. The guy too. is a complete fraud. So the thing is, what you need to do with Shakespeare is just burn all his books. He writes derogatory comments about attorneys. And, and he writes fraudulent stories in cities and places he's never been to. So just you, burn them all. Not, Dante, you, 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 I, I think Dante uh, made a topographical error. He really... Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. cut uh, him you, know, you know, you know that that, that somebody there's some there's a theory that actually uh, Shakespeare wasn't a man; he was a wo actually was a woman yeah, or something exactly. like this. Yeah, I, I actually there's there's a uh, great deal of evidence to suggest that Shakespeare was a woman. Um, and 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 I assume that yeah. that lawyers were also and are still all, always for the power, and at the time the power was represented by men. And so lawyers were, and so Shakespeare hated lawyers, basically. That's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a whole new spin I mean, on Shakespeare in love. Okay, I, I just got a note from my web route that my monthly system analyzer will run in five minutes to keep you up to date and doesn't give me a choice. I might be um, 
web rooted out of here in about five minutes. I know you guys will all miss me as I'm trying to destroy, Terribly. destroy William Shakespeare in front of your eyes. But yes. as, as the lawyers are Poor starting Willie. to, to Poor grow further oh. and further, you know, that, uh, and, yeah. and people start agreeing don't with me. Don't you hate that when it pulls that on you? I'm like, I, I it's not to supposed it. to do that. It's supposed to like let you choose, and it doesn't. More sophisticated ones that go, hey, we're going to do this in the evening. But see, uh, some of the ones that are coming up now, the computer says, we're going to override and take over your computer. We don't care if you're in the middle of a conversation. Goodbye. Yeah. I, I know. I was in the middle of a presentation with my Microsoft uh, computer one time, and it pulled that right in the middle of a presentation. Right. I go, I've got to be. I, I went off the deep end with Microsoft. Yeah, uh, Microsoft that's, intellectual property. Isn't it amazing that Bill Gates wrote MS DOS? Oh wait, he didn't. Nope. <laughs> he didn't I wonder if the computer person knows that. How did how uh, did he become Bill Gates' multi-millionaire at Microsoft? Multi-billionaire. Because he had a good lawyer. It was his dad. His dad was a lawyer. <laughs> dad was a good lawyer. A good lawyer. Program from a good, a good a good a good lawyer in IBM was completely foolish. So yes. I mean, the, the, right. they basically they basically bought from him something which will never be used, and they gave him MS DOS for yes. basically free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, his dad convinced him to do this, right, Nick? We we believe reading between the lines since his uh, dad is uh, was a partner at Preston Gates and Ellis, now known as KNL Gates, that he purchased the product from Tim Patterson at Seattle. Computer Works, which was known as Dirty Operating System, otherwise known as DOS. He rebranded it MS DOS, Microsoft uh, Disk Operating System, not Dirty Operating System, and then and licensed it. Didn't sell it, but licensed it to IBM to use as their software to run all the uh, computer programs. So what happened is, in reality, some some put, person put a bug in his ear. Probably a lawyer and possibly his father saying, why don't you just license it to IBM, don't sell it. And 100 billion plus plus later, Bill right. Gates became uh, very famous. Uh, My dad and, wasn't a lawyer. Well, that's the reason you end up where you end up, Jim. I mean, you know, not everybody <laughs> can, can be on the top of the heap. Well, Robert Soprano, who is a very famous lawyer in Italy, is what, five, fifth generation lawyer, right, Roberto? Yeah, fifth generation, yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Fifth so generation. Which, which makes every, every family reunion very boring. <laughs> and there's now an eighth circle of hell. <laughs> well, my, 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 my niece just told me two, two weeks ago when I was on holidays and I saw my niece, uh, my niece's birthday. Uh, and one of my nieces, which is oh, 14, I said, you're going to be a lawyer. And, and she said, I'm not boring as the rest of the family. So <laughs> I think we are going, I mean, tradition is, 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 is going to be to end more or less, but I hope they will have, have a better leaving than we had. <laughs> <laughs> At least more, 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 more adventurous, I think, I hope. Yeah. Well, and, I mean, uh, I mean, do you have a mix of lawyers in your family? Do you have like some are tax attorneys, some are labor attorneys, some are personal injury, some are prosecutors, or are they all in the same? Legal no, we 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 all, we all in different fields because um, that that's not actually the reason. Uh, I mean, the reason why we are all in different fields is because we can't work together. So we are all in different <laughs> law firms, in different <laughs> firms, and so because we don't. I mean, we don't suffer. Uh, I, I I basically suffer my brother, my little brother, and and my father, and my other brother doesn't basically bears me at all. So we <laughs> we try to see it apart as much as possible. Okay. And I, I do completely. We do completely different things. My, my father is, is a, does banking. I do M and A uh, and and capital markets. The other brother is basically a corporate lawyer. So everybody does, does something different. But well, we have all. We have subject. All, That's really yeah. interesting, Rob Roberto. And because you know, my father was a professor of mathematics. And although I was very good at mathematics, there was no way I was going to major in mathematics when I went to college. Yeah. Well, you know, but, well, but, I, I decided to, to do something very near to banking, but not banking, so that I, my, my father couldn't actually 
judge me on my job. So that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you were avoiding the potential of parental scorn, and that's how you <laughs> feel. <Exactly>. Amazing. <laughs> Well, well, we, we we are all very competitive. So, uh, so, and I, I saw my father, who, but but my my uncle is a, is a, was actually um, a bankruptcy lawyer. So, and my father is a banking lawyer. So they always been on opposite sides, and and so I saw them competing for basically everything, even for for the last olive on on the table. So <laughs> I decided uh, <laughs> competition. That kind of competition, I don't like it. <laughs> uh, do, do you ever, uh, uh, Roberto? Do you ever face uh, copyright, trademark, and um, patent legal issues when you're doing mergers and acquisitions? Um, now, um, even more frequently, because um, I mean, there was a time where during the due diligence and also during the M&A, basically uh, everything which was tech was given was given for granted, and so basically there was no big issue on. All the international agreements, and with the importance of, of patents and, and and copyrights and and trademarks, there's there's a focus on always there's more focus on it, and and oh, and if you I mean in all those I'm basically in all uh, this tech M and A transaction, usually the only thing you have is either a, a patent or something which is patentable, so. Um, yeah, it's 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 growing as it's growing growing. We have one of our partners in our firm. She's basically um, an IP lawyer, and she does only IP, mm -hmm. which I would be crazy in something like fifty minutes, right? Because mm -hmm. it's it's one of those things which you have a huge amount of procedures and and, and terms and then. It makes me crazy. I, I like more transactional stuff because it's 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 more creative. So let's see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. I wanted to do a reality TV show on uh, mergers and acquisitions, and um, just so that you uh, there's a competition and you get guys and they go out and look for companies that match other companies, and okay, and there's a competition on. Okay, the first guy to get through the deal. Uh, wins this much, and if he gets like the milestones in between the acquisition, uh, the due diligence, and make it into a reality format, so that hey, uh, we can do M and A in Italy, M and A in London, M and A in San Francisco. <laughs> we, we, in, 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 in our in our uh, in our international network, that's the reason why actually we we met with IBM TV, which is called Global Law. We have uh, we organized a, a, a competition. Actually, uh, yep. we we make uh, basically a team of of different lawyers from different law firms, and they start to negotiate. Uh, like it's a it, like it's a moot court competition uh, where you uh -huh. have a case and you discuss the case. In this in this in this instance, you have basically. A letter of intent, and you have to get from the letter of intent of intent to the to the final the, to the final agreement. And yep. uh, some of us uh, pretend to be the yep. the client, and yep. some of us are basically judging how the dynamics of the group go on, and which is yep. which is kind of very interesting to understand also how junior yep. lawyers, because it's for more junior lawyers, um, yep. actually deal with it without having us to breathe of them on their necks every five seconds absolutely and and, and the other thing is that but the, actually the, the for, from a lawyer from a lawyer point of view who cares what happens after closing well every lawyer every every m a lawyer can tell you that the only thing you care actually if, if there is a delayed payment and there is the indemnity uh, or there are indemnities to be paid that's the only concern you have but it's in the back of your mind basically but the real problem with mergers and, and, and acquisition is from 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 a structure and from a deal point of view is that more than half of the of 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 the the, the MA transaction happening uh, every year are going bad after the after right. the signing because uh, this the, the, we do all these things like numbers uh, like legal stuff uh, and then uh, there's really 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 few I mean there's not the big interest to really understand 
the different culture of the companies, the different the different process. Uh, and I usually say to my clients, I, I do. I mean, I do my job, and I and and I'm happy with the closing and whatever happens. It's it's basically not a, other work for us. But uh, you have to think. I mean, you have to really the the real due diligence should be understanding really each other how the different cultures can be merged and can be can be uh, can can basically add value to the to the company because sometimes you just put other other turnover in which is not which is not basically granted that you will you will have the same turnover as the after selling co- or the acquired company has and 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 then you start having problems because there are different way of working the and especially with co- especially when you are going cross border there's people who's convinced that uh, I, i'm not criticizing uh, us companies but the usual the cat happens that usually us companies thinks that they buy somebody in the southern of italy and then the guys in southern italy are, a they all speak english because in the movies they all speak English perfectly. Uh, uh, B, they have the same culture. They have the same culture as as as, as corporate USA. Um, and but by, by the way, I I I I mean when basically, for example, when Naples is playing Champions League, you will have everybody looking at the Champions League. You will not have no very few people standing at at the, at the process line. So. Right. And I, I don't think it happens in the U.S. So when you when you merge when you acquire some a company, you have basically to understand a lot of things, which, from my point of view, are underestimated when you when when people start speaking about the transaction. And that's that's as I said, culture, environment, uh, use uh, the way different people does different things, and and sometimes uh, trying to impose my way of doing to somebody else it can be uh, which has a completely different background can be really disrupt not disrupting but it can be jeopardized every every kind of good result right mm-hmm. yeah yes. and, uh, and <clears throat> i'm sorry nick um, i was going to ask bill to give me some uh leeway here to channel my inner paul harvey because okay. what you're talking about is the merger and acquisition is one part but then there's the rest of the story what is the merge and acquired company actually going to be doing in the future? And the rest of the story sometimes is not a happy ending. Yeah. That's what I'm hearing. No. Well, well, the biggest 68% one going on right. Eight percent of the time. Sorry, sixty-eight percent of the time. Uh, the, 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 from a from a business point of view, M and A transactions are unsuccessful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the That's biggest one going on right now, as you know, is TikTok is looking to be acquired potentially by, you'll love this partnership, Walmart and Walmart Microsoft. And, Microsoft. and I'm really? going to like, talk about, yeah, talk about a marriage made in hell. I mean, <laughs> can you imagine Walmart and Microsoft, like they came from the same culture, is going to jointly get together to create Nuco to buy TikTok, which is a Chinese basically oriented company. And I'm going like, okay, how's this all going to work out? Uh, Roberto, what, what's your thoughts on that one? That 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 to me seems. Very well, there's, odd. There's, there's, a, there's a there's a lot of talk about this. Um, I mean, first of all, it, it's crazy to think that TikTok is going to sell not not all TikTok, only the U.S. operation, which means that TikTok will be worldwide managed by the Chinese, right? And only in the U.S. Uh, it will be managed by Walmart and uh, Microsoft. And, and Microsoft. <laughs> right. Uh, Basically, you're with the idea that Microsoft and Walmart are going to develop TikTok in as a, in a, as a competitor to to the Chinese TikTok. So that that's already crazy enough. Um, the other thing is that uh, you basically you the, the U.S. government is saying to the biggest uh, software manufacturer in uh, software produ- producer in the U.S. you have to get as others your uh, filming, uh, your video content company uh, and and basically strengthen the monopolization also in other markets. Because once, I mean, once once uh, Microsoft will acquire TikTok, 
everything from Microsoft will have a, a link to TikTok. There's, I mean, otherwise, why, why shouldn't they buy, spend money on on, on, on this thing? Uh, and I mean, it's it's. I don't know who. How, how, I mean, I understand that the reason is to make a commercial war towards the Chinese. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, and now, I mean, and 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 but 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 come on, I mean, uh, but, 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 but I did, did, you, did you see the latest fight though? Is there's an artificial intelligent bot that determines what you want to listen to, and the Chinese say we own that bot, so they don't mind selling TikTok, but they want to keep the bot, in other words, the artificial intelligent engine. And this, this is going to exist if it doesn't already in a lot of media. In other words, is rather than you driving yourself to media, media will drive itself to you based on what its perception is, what you want to listen to. And this is where the Chinese do not want to give that uh, artificial intelligent bot uh, up. I, I mean, I mean the, 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 real, the real deal, or the, the real in the background, the real deal of all these transactions is not TikTok. TikTok's, uh, let me say, TikTok is one of the worst thing I ever seen. And people on TikTok. <laughs> does, <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Let's uh, get a panel vote on that. How many people agree? <laughs> you know. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> okay, but anyway, people, yes, it is. people, people uh, sometimes, sometimes if you, I, I mean, I was with my, with one of my niece looking her uh, TikTok or TikTok account, and she basically acts like a fool every two, two seconds because she does some dances or some, some challenges. Yeah. And, and really, uh, at least in YouTube, you can have content. In in TikTok, you don't have the time to to have content, and if there is some kind of content, it's usually really, really, really bad. So, but the real <laughs> the real fight uh, is actually that, and 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 I, I, I but I don't think that Mr. Trump and his great best winning fantastic advisors have really gotten into this. I mean, the real war there is about in artificial intelligence. You know that there are two different kind of artificial intelligence. The one developed by the by the Western countries, especially the US, and the one which is completely different developed by the Chinese. If the I mean if they wanted if the idea was ha ah, let's give it, let's have an access and understand how the uh, artificial intelligence of the Chinese works then the then it's the, the the transaction shouldn't be about TikTok US should be like let's try to buy TikTok and Xi Jinping is he's he's a good guy but I don't think he will be really, at, at least I mean they already declared that if they are going to sell the TikTok the actually the last word will be China, the, the from Beijing so yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, well, are we going to bet on China's AI or Trump's gut? You know, I kind of think I would want to bet on China's AI. On China's AI, but the thing is, at the same time, okay, here's the real thing. I see value in TikTok because I looked at them going, "You got to be kidding me!" But here, where's the value? Eight hundred million subscribers. That's the value of TikTok. Let's get real. If you look at that program, I mean, I glanced at. I'm going. I was like you, Roberto. Okay, it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. It's frankly the stupidest idea in the world. I mean, but but as we well know, you can have a stupid idea and you can have a great idea. Like there was this chess player who's Lev Sakaias, well known throughout the world, wrote a, a beautiful book right, here we go. on chess and was a huge, a horrible sales guy. He Nine thousand like copies. And then there's a guy that no one knows. You know, he sits in a corner office somewhere in San Francisco, and he wrote a book. I think it had chess for dummies, appealing to the lowest possible denominator. He sold millions of them. So what happens is the best ideas don't necessarily become the most profitable and well-seen ideas out there. And so TikTok, even though it is like one of the worst ideas anyone could possibly imagine, has 800 million subscribers. And that's the value of the base of TikTok. It's they want the 800 million people's uh, contact information. And, but, and, and again, and, that's, that's, that, that's, that's, that's wrong. I mean, you can get more, but people who is on, on TikTok is also on, on, on Instagram, Facebook, and so on. Yes. <laughs> the, if the reason is I have to get to those 800 and whatever million, whatever they are, 
then that's the wrong transaction. I mean, that's the wrong fight to fight. The real fight should be about let's try to get either an agreement with China on AI and have one AI who works for everybody so that the Chinese have not something which can disrupt everything in you in, in the Western world without not us understanding. Or 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 let's try to have a, a glimpse of what the Chinese AI are. I mean, if the war, the problem is that Trump is doing a war for something completely different, but the, the, as usually as as usually as luckily as he's always lucky that he got the wrong the, the for the wrong reasons the right thing, but he's going to is keeping to stick with the wrong reasons, and therefore he will have no success at all at the end of the day. Or if he will have a success, it will be only for himself and not for the rest of the, of the U.S. economy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but it, but but my question is: TikTok just going to flame out? In other words, is this a what I would call a fad? You know that, uh, and there was there's been a lot of fad in in the non IT area. They they were selling these rocks at one time, pet rocks, I think they called it. In other words, these fads have a way of hey, they're great. Everybody's got to have a pet rock. And then all of a sudden, no one buys pet rocks anymore because it was a stupid fad. Is TikTok just a what I call a stupid fad, except in the IT area? In other words, all of a sudden, it has this big flare up, and then it's going to just uh, be like MySpace uh, die because, it, frankly, there's nothing there. I, mean, I totally agree with you, Nick. Uh, TikTok looks yeah. like it's going to head into, like, become a MySpace kind of thing. Because, yeah. like uh, Roberto was saying, you look at the content. There's yeah, no content. There's nothing there. It's a, it's it's a it's hi. a hi. Good yeah, morning. Yeah, right, right. Hi, What's hi. I'm, I'm Joni. I'm Joni from you know Malaysia. Or hi, I'm Joni what from the heck you know. Is that? Uh, well, let's look at it from a different point of view, the end user's point of view, because you want to write to your audience. And do you have an audience that likes this stuff? And do you have 800 million of them, maybe? Yeah. So yeah, maybe you start perfect. paying attention to that. And then you think, okay, this 800 million is going to grow out of TikTok. But there's going to be another 800 million growing into that phase where they think it's fascinating and fun. So maybe, maybe what? it's a my space or maybe not. Because we don't no. know. No, I, I, I think actually... I think actually your your point, Jim, is it's 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 the best point. If you're looking from the point from the, from the consumer's point of view or from the from the user's point of view, uh, I mean TikTok is perfect because he the, the the attention span of 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 the modern, I mean of the new generation, it's under one minute. So TikTok is designed. I know it's it's. That's I mean, true. It's, All right, it, I hear you. It's no. designed. It's you get you get. Either it's the stupid, or you get the nice girls, or the nice guys, or whatever it is. But for a minute, so you can directly go on the next one. And and while for for the I read an article somewhere where it says, oh, you know, YouTube is always is 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 is, is even from time is going towards television, and content in 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 in, in YouTube is is going to is. Is now the average content on YouTube is now around ten minutes, five, five minutes, sorry, which is which is too much because if you're just on on a, sitting on 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 a bus on a train, uh, if you're somewhere and you want to 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 just see something nice, you need 15, 20, 30 seconds. No, no, not five minutes that somebody explains to you whatever happens in the world. So. I think it's it's going to. I mean, the, the chain is going to shift towards TikTok. So you have seen. I mean, there is always less people looking at traditional television. Streaming is is now more important than the traditional television. And uh, and 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 when, and when you have a, when you can condense also the, what you stream in a TikTok in one minute. I mean, mm -hmm. again. Uh, you prefer to see all the game, all the football, all the four hours of a football game, or just the few tries, which has in in, in three minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, unless it's Alabama, I would like. I mean, I'm going for the highlights. <laughs> so, yeah. but because I like because I like Alabama, usually destroying everybody else. But that's. <laughs> <why> <laughs> <laughs> Well, since I went to the University of Miami, we have a yeah. big game 
next year with Alabama. So we'll, well they were good once. Yeah, we were good yeah, we once. Were. Right. <laughs> the U, baby, the U. Yeah, you when, when, I, when, I, when I was young, it was – sorry. No, go ahead. No, no. When I was young, the U was nothing. Yeah. And they were corky, violent. When I was young, they, they were, were too. <laughs> that, that was my university, the U, okay. baby. The U. Well, Nick, uh, yeah. then I have to thank you because your university had uh, Jim Kelly, which you sent up yep. to the Buffalo Bills. Right. So yeah. thank you for that. Right. And he won so many Super Bowls. Yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, when people get trouble at IBM, just get rid of them. I mean, come on, this guy's okay. Wow. Anyway. <laughs> See, the thing is, there, there's, got, there's, got, well, he's learning to be a producer now. So the thing is, he's going to be very dangerous because Jim will have control of the board. And oh, man, I may get eliminated here. That'd be awful. So the thing is, uh, the thing is, the um, yeah, they the, they actually had separate law dorms. We we lived in the law dorms. Then right next door, literally, was the uh, football dorms. So they were actually um, in their own separate dorms, which today they have to be because of COVID-19. And for the lawyers, they just wanted to keep us away from everybody else on campus for obvious reasons. <laughs> and uh, it was just the way it was at the uh, at the the, the U uh, uh, back there when Jim Kelly was there. Yeah, he, he was there when I was there at the same time. We're kind of contemporaries, but um, they had a good they had a good team, and we're looking always to come back. We've been looking for the last twenty years to come back and beat Alabama. So uh, it, it's def definitely on the list. Uh, yeah, in terms of TikTok. I'm not sure where it's going. I do see the 800 million. That was the most thing that interested me. You got 800 million viewers, and you yeah. can't, you cannot ignore 800 million eyeballs. I mean, yeah, watching. You know, but you know, you know, Nick. Just to echo your point, I mean, I see you get access to the files of 800 million people. That mm -hmm. alone is, uh, you know, uh, breathtaking. But I really can't see any other use. And then you know, Walmart. I don't know how they. Yeah. I, I, I don't get that angle. <laughs> well, I, the thing is, a lot of them that watch that, because I, I think Roberto already said it's mindless. It appeals to their customer base. So what happens is that Walmart thought that uh, this would be a great acquisition because a lot of their customers go on TikTok, then they could throw their Walmart commercial in, then they go go to Walmart to shop. I mean, I, I don't as, know. I, yeah. as far as I'm, uh, as far as I read, um, I've read uh, on this on Walmart. The idea is that a um, Walmart is trying to give a cover to Microsoft that they are not going to uh, string, basically have a more dominant position they already have also in other markets. And, and that's the first thing. And the other thing is that actually they think uh, Walmart supposedly, allegedly, thinks that uh, this could be a vehicle, a perfect vehicle for, for them to um, reach new clients and uh, um, and, mm -hmm. and sell products, but, but I don't. I mean, I have no idea. Uh, when basically, when there are a couple of girls and guys dancing straight in a strange way on TikTok, what what is Walmart going to sell? Maybe they will have some announcement below the below the the, the dance saying, if you dance like this, you can get your I don't know. Um, no. You can you can buy your hula. What? You, there, there, are, there are medicines can, you can cure this or so something like that. <laughs> Roberto, what is the average attention span of a Walmart shopper? Well, it must be a little, little bit longer than one minute because last time I was in Walmart, it took me something like two hours. To, yeah, but to, they're going down from the one aisle to the next. 20, and your attention span on any given product is less than a minute. Well, less right. than a minute. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. it's, I mean, if you look at everything which is produced now also by by the marketing guys it everything is uh, even though the, the, the jihad maybe is more than one minute but the core the the, the 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 core of the advertising is usually less than 25 seconds yes really then wow. you have a okay. lot of yeah and see what we're doing is we're actually breaking our program down because this is a four-hour block or maybe it's three hours now. We're trying to break it down to one hour block, which still may be too much. So I got to go talk to our directors and producers that maybe Startup Wednesday should be a one minute show. What do you think, Willie? Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> one minute? Okay. Talk very It'd be all Willie, though, for one minute. Yeah, you're going to have still, to discuss the whole I startup I thing still, in one minute. I still have faith in the startups. I still have faith, always have faith in the startups that 
someday they'll get to their senses and come back and join us. <laughs> but right, like right. you say, well, the, the well, secret sauce is the marketing. But there's no amount of explaining to them that marketing is where it's at. And you need to get it to the marketing stage and go out and sell, sell your product. But, you know, they well, don't see that. They think they have the next best thing since sliced bread. But, hey, and you can't tell them otherwise. Yeah. And but, you know, there's an exercise. There's, there's, there's one exercise which is the, 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 which is uh, for, very important for startups, which is how to sell your pitch. And you know the average, I mean, you know when, when they, for example, every university, every every course which you do, your pitch has to be at maximum uh, three minutes. Yes. Uh, and, and and usually one minute. And there's, I, I mean, I, I was speaking with a venture capitalist last, last week uh, because although I was on vacation, I was working. Uh, and he said to me, he said, if you can't basically... Um, describe your idea in one minute, then it's too complex. And 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 going back to, to TikTok, TikTok is for, for would be for perfect for for startups to to use it as a as a marketing channel because you have to exercise and to 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 basically give all the content and all the explanation you need in just one minute or less than that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's well, a you know, very it, important point, Roberto. Yeah, because... yeah, but, but 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 is it the is it the best way to do things? Because uh, this moves toward fast foods versus sitting down at a nice restaurant. Right. Okay. Right now we're in the world of fast food, garbage, internet stuff, which is one minute, and then you got to sit down at a nice restaurant. Now I don't know about you, Roberto, but when you're in Rome, which you live in, do you go eat at McDonald's or do you eat at a, a nice restaurant uh, in uh, Rome? Where do you eat at? Pro problem is that in also in Italy, also if you go to McDonald's, it takes you one hour to have the lunch, so, because you, <laughs> you, during during your hamburger, you basically speak about oh how how the, the good food you can have in the U.S. So I mean my, my my, my, and you my, have to use your hands when you're talking too. So yeah, well, uh, not not too much. Not to, it depends <laughs> where you're from. But, but my my sister my sister in law she's she's Belgian and she's always amazed from the fact that every time we have we are at the dinner table, all the family together. The only I mean, the only real um, team of conversation is food. <laughs> so even while we are eating, we are speaking about food. And the funny thing is, I actually, look, it looks like that we are not really enjoying the meal because we are thinking about other foods which we eat somewhere else. But that's the way we work. No, but going back to your, to, 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 to your question, um, it's not what I think. Uh, I, I love, I mean, I love, the, I love to have lunch and dinner the way it was 20 years ago. Where you can sit, have half an hour, one hour, uh, chat with your parents, friends, and whatever. Uh, I I don't I don't I, I think I, I my last lunch which lasted half an hour, not 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 not, not even one hour, was something like one year ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, because so, so, it's, yeah. it's 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 the way society goes, and 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 if you put everything together, I think one of the problems. I mean. Uh, my mother always, and my grandmother always used to say when I was younger that we use remote control to see. I mean, it's 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 like remote control with television when we were younger. I mean, our parents didn't have remote and they would look at the entire program, the entire movie. We had remote control and you would, you would check in different programs at the same time. And this is ended with having a very, very, very 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 small span of of interest and attention, mm -hmm. and yeah. I don't. I mean, I'm not saying it's good or bad, but but, but, that's but the way when it. I when I was in sales, there was a guy named Tom Hopkins who wrote a book, How to Master the Art of Selling, and he sold millions of copies, maybe even more than Jim Eade, but I don't know if anybody sold as many copies as Jim has. On his no, book. that guy. But yeah. but but it was a great book, and he said the optimal presentation was twenty minutes. OK, and we used to follow that and try to say, well, our optimal presentation per speaker was 20 minutes. We usually did two hour 
uh, seminars around the United States, but I was, we were looking at the 20 minutes where the person either made a decision or not. Well, that 20 minutes seems to be now condensed to two minutes, three minutes. And I'm going, how do you deliver I'll just a share my experience. presentation in that point? I'll share my experience because I shopped around. We did the um, a world chess championships for players with disabilities. And um, so we had all this footage. And so I shopped it around to video editors, one that, that I was going to be a uh, uh, able to pay because uh, they charged a lot like lawyers do. Um, and <laughs> then I thought, you know, what am I trying to say? And they said, you only have three minutes at the most. Every single one that I shopped it to said the same thing. You have three minutes at the most to get your message. Yeah. Yeah, but see, see, I, I don't think that that should be correct. It should be back to the twenty-minute rule because if you have a presentation to make twenty minutes, can be a way to make a presentation. What well, I would agree with is, is the the legal briefs and the legal opinions are too long. When are they going to get down? I mean, the no. Supreme Court and the rules that come out of your city, Washington, Bill. No. Every time your 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 guys at the Department of Labor issue a ruling like the fiduciary rule, the fiduciary right. rule was one thousand. 32 pages of garbage coming out of Washington, D.C. And they, they, if they can't, ex if it takes them 1,032 pages to explain a fiduciary rule, they need to redo their rules. Yeah, exactly. Every rule I can get from Washington. No, except that what ha what occurs is they have to go and they have to, you know, think ahead for every uh, person out there that's running a business that just wants to cut corners. And so they have to give the advisory opinions. If you're in this circumstance, then this is the appropriate way to apply this. Because you would think in an ideal world, if it was simple as, you know, uh, don't put your employees in harm's way, everybody would understand that that being that simple. But, uh, you know, everybody says, oh, well, that can be interpreted any other way. And they go get a lawyer, Jim. And in fact, it is interpreted every other way. So they have to come out with these incredibly long uh, opinions. Uh, the the lawyer. Lawyer. Oh, we, 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 we in Italy have, I mean, we... In Italy, there's the principle that um, every, basically every entrepreneur is is basically some kind of pirate or buccaneer, and he wants to cut corners at every every day, every time he can, and so on. And so everything is in the in the state. I mean, the, the legislative state of mind is that it's not to regulate a market or do something for the market to function better but only to prevent somebody doing something which is not uh, correct from the from the legislator point of view and then you have those laws that are completely crazy and are bloody long i mean we are starting school now. this uh, in a couple of weeks we're starting school mm -hmm. so they finally made the, the guidelines and they decided the government decided that uh, you don't you you don't need social distancing in school buses, uh, um, provided that the school bus trip is not longer than fifty minutes, mm -hmm. one five, one five, fifteen. Right. Hey, I don't know where. I mean, yeah. I don't know where they bloody live because <laughs> I mean, you're in Rome or in Naples, it takes me fifty minutes to go to the next block. <laughs> and 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 when and when and when the school bus is 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 uh, takes more because there is a red light or there is I don't know some kind of problem. It's more than 50, you you just you just throw kids out of the windows of the bus and make them walk. But no. that's not. I mean, okay, that's the crazy. I mean, that's the funny part. And the, but the crazy the crazy thing is that to 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 basically. Um, regulate this. You have a 15 line article which basically also defines the idea of 15, what, what 15 minutes means. 20 lines to, this, to basically say, oh, if the trip is more than 15 minutes, then you have to have social distancing. If, if um, it's if within the 15 minutes, you can, you can, you have, you just have to wear masks. So one thing which I said in one sentence is it's become a twenty-line article, which yeah. is, which is, which going to your point, Bill, it's the way lawyers find a way to cut corners, saying, ah, okay, yeah, but fifty minutes means fifty minutes, not fifty minutes the trip. 
the, the, the journey means 50 minutes, the bus is actually really traveling. So you have to deduct that that's that's the, right. the way lawyers are right. thinking. So right. you have to deduct the, 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 the red light stop, the crossing stop, uh, the the one you stop in uh, in traffic, and so from 50 minutes you will have kids which are not wearing masks on a two hour trip because it's actually 50 minutes because the journey is 50 minutes, but uh, yeah, you know you have all these. And, and do you think do you think the kids read these thousands of pages? No. no so why, who are they talking to? I mean, it, it's no, it's insane. No, they, 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 that's that's I don't know when when it happens, but when it happened, but states are so, starting. So, I think during the sixties they start to be patronizing in, in every and each way. So, Speaking about your health, speaking about what you have to do, what you have, you have to wear a helmet, you don't have to wear an helmet, and so on, and so on. Especially in Europe, and and they usually start from the point that everybody's evil, everybody's stupid, and and that ah, oh, it's impossible to do something. I mean, the, the huge discussion is now ah. Oh, uh, kids cannot stay in school with 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 the with the facial mask because ah you know kids with the facial masks, and I spoke with different people and different parents and different kids about this, and a couple of kids told me, well if I have to wear a mask for, for five hours or four hours, I will have to wear the mask for five hours. This I mean, but just you have to tell people if you tell people what they have to do, people will comply. But if you discuss three Three months, uh, we cannot do this because kids will not be happy. Kids are obviously have either a they don't care about the discussion, and b they will actually have any any ground to say, "Oh, I'm not happy," since you discussed for three months that I'm not happy. So, I mean, this is, everything is so miserable, patronizing, and they don't get results at the end of the day. And this happens, and this happens especially in Europe, with and in Italy, with business, with startups and and um, new businesses. It's there's all. I mean, there's always this talk about youngster have to be help. We should help youngsters and young companies and startup companies and so on and so on. But it's always talk. And the, the only thing they do usually is is to well. We give an incentive to investors to invest in startup companies so that they have a tax deduction. Okay. So yes, it's an, it's start, the startup and the youngsters, which in Italy means fifty years, basically until fifty years, get get an indirect results. But who has the money to give them to to, to invest in a startup company? The older generation. So you're basically giving another. Another, you're entitling more the elder, the older generation. You're giving another advantage to the old generation. So, yeah, and then the, the money just really doesn't get into the startup community. At least, well, at least what I've seen. When I, I was talking to some other countries, though, uh, that in France, apparently, Roberto, that the government was funding startups. In the Netherlands, they were funding startups. There were direct investments in the United States. Mm -hmm. They're, they're going to come out with these billion dollar programs, but I don't think any of that money is going to hit a startup. It's going to be gobbled up by all the large companies and the startups are going to be lucky to get anything. And that same thing that happened recently with our three and a half trillion dollar incentives or whatever we did to pump in the economy, a little bit went to the bottom 50%, but most well, of it was how do well, we know? Because, because eventually, Jim, they'll come out with studies, but just from the, the empirical data we've gathered and some of the data that we've gathered when they did these um, uh, these stimulus to stop the um, bleeding of COVID-19 here, the three and a half million dollar uh, stimulus, like in one of my companies, uh, the smaller the company, the less they got. And they got really tiny amounts. The bigger companies got huge amounts of. But cash. my point, Nick, is there was an inspector general who was supposed to tell us where that money went, and he got fired. Yeah, well, that's, exactly. what, I'm saying, that's what I'm saying. Eventually, we'll find out, but maybe longer than than you think, uh, as to terms of where, where, in other words, where where did the three and a half trillion dollars go? And we do know that all of a sudden there's two point seven trillion in cash 
sitting in large companies. So duh, I guess where it went. And Betsy it wasn't Davis a, company got some. Oh, you mean Amway? Well, the, whatever company she's involved with, she's sec- her, she's her, her husband circle. started the Amway, a, a big, big multi-level marketing yeah. uh, company. And and the thing is, but a lot of the, the larger companies ended up with a lot. And even the smaller companies, the larger you were, the more you got, the yeah. smaller you were. So and when it comes back, their stock. Yeah. With, yeah, they didn't but that's what they do. They didn't no, hire people. no, no, they 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 don't. Usually, and most of the stimulus programs I see coming out of that Washington, it mm-hmm. doesn't go to the purpose it was intended. In other words, uh, because it's yeah. always. I mean, it's 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 wrong because it's it's wrong. I mean, it, you it's always the wrong target. Uh, I mean, when 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 in the before COVID nineteen, most of the of the tax relief. Of the big companies doesn't when doesn't when they, they doesn't use it for new investments or, or or new ventures or to do something good. It was used to buy back company shares. Right, that's exactly right. Right, so and if, that, if you give company, I mean, if you give huge companies money, it's, it's not it's not that. Uh, as usually, I'm European, so I'm per se communist or socialist or whatever. But it's it's pretty clear that if you give to a multinational company uh, money and and the duty of also by uh, based on the Revlon uh, judgment of the directors is to maximize the the, the, the profits for the club for for the for the shareholders, they will do whatever they want that they, they for can for the statement. Much, yeah, yeah, exactly. Quarterly statement. That's what they care about. Yeah, it, it, it is. You're, but you're right, Roberto. The the duty of the uh, corporate executives is to maximize the shareholders' stock, and in order to do that, they are the shareholders. So the maximum amount of money is to benefit them. I mean, that's kind of like the marching orders I get from two hundred of is, the two hundred companies I work for. But, but that, that I mean, that's that's correct. From I mean, that's correct since this is you're a director of a company. This is your duty. There's there's tons of judgment and laws which says you have to do this and you have to do this. So giving them money and saying them okay, uh, spend, use it for 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 to to uh, improve the market or uh, to. Uh, restart economy and consumes and consumers yeah. and, 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 and based transaction and consumes and whatever it is, they, they will say no. I'm going to buy something which I'm sure that will be used, and in in six months time I will use it to to make more money for my stakeholders. So maybe the the only real way to uh, to 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 try to get really money into economy is giving money to the people. Hoping that they are going to spend it, because the other great problem is that in Italy we have a huge, we have the biggest, the, the big, the biggest saving in the world. I mean, the, we have in in Italy it's the the the, the, the average of the, the amount of 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 money which is saved by the by the families towards the one who spend it is completely crazy. We have something like four or five trillion euros of of of, of savings of Private savings, mm-hmm. right? Uh, so think, yeah. But you have to hope that people. I mean, if I get, if maybe it's like in Germany, they did it in Germany. It, it worked pretty good. They gave basically every and each person something like thousand bucks, and people started using the thousand bucks. People bought that's a new TV. Yeah, and, 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 and I mean, yeah. that's the way. To do it. That, that was the but only people, good thing I, I saw about the program. They did give twelve hundred dollars to everybody to tide them over during the, the um, COVID-19, but they weren't as generous in Canada, where in Canada they gave something like $2,000 a month for uh, every month till the end of the year. But those are the only good things that I saw that came out. Every other thing that came out was g- great for my company, We but we what we did is we just parked cash. If, yeah. you, th- if you think we went out and and created more jobs, you're, you're out of your bloody mind. You know, that, that's not part of our marching orders. Our marching orders is to increase the shareholders' value, not to um, create jobs. Um, I think it's the top of the hour. I just want to let it you know. It is the top of the hour, so we should do our introductions at the top of the hour. We do have Willie Hill from Startup Australia down in Melbourne. Good day, mate. And we have Alexander Starr, star of Investing with Sasha, and also 
He also does the Chess Stars on uh, Saturday. Mark Lee has just joined us from the Great Raleigh Durham area, who does the uh, Mark Lee Radio Hour on Monday and also the, the dinner party. For those who want to uh, have dinner with Mark, well, it's virtual, but you have to <laughs> sign up for it. Jim Mead is with the Eid Foundation in uh, San Francisco, California. Roberto Spencer is for Soprano from Italy with a fifth generation law firm, also a member of Global Law, which is where I, I, I met him through is the uh, Global Law connection. And then Sharif, who runs um, the Sharif School of Economics, on uh, and which is a worldwide program in economics and also is doing another program. Is it tonight or is it tomorrow night that that's on? Because you're on Malaysia tomorrow night. <laughs> it's tomorrow oh, night. Oh, it's tonight sure? in Malaysia. Yes. Yeah, it's tonight yeah. though for me, right? It's tonight there for me. Yes. Tonight yes, for yes. me, which yeah. is tomorrow morning for you, right? Uh, it's no, new. actually, it, uh, actually this is. Uh, like now, uh, 11, uh, 12, 12 a.m. in Malaysia. Right, 12, 12 a.m. So, right. yes, I am. Uh, our program is after uh, 19, 21 or hours. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to show up at 9.30 tonight if you send me the link, because 9.30 yes. tonight, my time might be 9.30 in the morning, your time. Yeah. No, uh, 9.30 my time, 9.30 my time, Malaysian time, your morning 9.30, I think. Yeah, right, right. But the thing is, yes. Uh, but 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 I go on at nine thirty my time, which is nine thirty in the morning your time, right? No, nine thirty p.m. my my, my time nine thirty p.m. Your yeah. nine thirty a.m. So I show up at nine thirty a.m. my time. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. All right. Well, whatever, whatever's yes. good. I'll figure it out. Send me the link. But uh, tell us a little little about the uh, program that you're putting on. Yes. Uh, no, basically, this, this is one of the program. Actually, this is the uh, teachers from different institutions, 300 different institutions in India, from Bangladesh and this community. So uh, this, this program is exclusively for uh, actually for the, um, uh, the, uh, for the faculty. Uh, and uh, uh, the training program and their development program. So uh, Professor Nick will join join this program uh, as a keynote speaker. As a keynote speaker, so first 15 minutes, actually, uh, he do his speech on educational development, and uh, then rest of the things, uh, like example, other faculties and other I think uh, uh, government from the government from different in, uh, universities and different institutions, uh, they are joining other things they will run. So actually, Professor Nix will join over there as a keynote speaker. And we have actually many interesting things in academic sector we are developing uh, uh, the next one years. So definitely IBM TV will be a partner with us as a media partner uh, because we are only caring about the uh, uh, intellectual activities. Uh, as a forum, as a research organization, we are just taking care of the intellectual activities. But definitely we need a good uh, uh, like a media partner. So definitely IBM, uh, we, we, we bring them. And any of the guests, any of the guests from here and the future, those who want to contribute for academic sectors, especially for faculty and the young people, uh, they can join with us and we, 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 we want to welcome them because we have many interesting activities. Hopefully it will be very interesting. And one important thing is that, it, that this conference actually, it's, it's actually Bangla conference in different mm -hmm. languages, but only right. the English speaker is uh, Professor Nick. Uh, but this is also uh, adding some value. I think I think already hundreds, hundreds and hundred education institution know about the IBM TV and Professor Nix and it it happily promote in India and the Bangladesh even even in Asia. So hopefully it will be a very interesting session for everyone. In in what language are they going to be speaking in uh, predominantly? No, no, definitely they know English, no problem. But for her development aspects and after your session, definitely you are keynote speakers. So mm -hmm. after your session, the other things will be conducted in Bangla language. Okay. Uh, but your session definitely in English and my session definitely in English. But other things, they will run like there are other teams. They will conduct these sessions and uh, they are very, very important positions in academic area. Uh, mm -hmm. They will they will work with us. So this is the plan. Actually, I do more hundred percent focus on academic sectors. So right. next one year, I think that we can bring many interesting and many exciting event. 
hopefully it will be uh, i always say i'm not for millionaires i'm for millions of people so hopefully <laughs> we can reach the millions of the people yes this can be on ibm tv yeah. then uh, the, the presentation can be on ibm tv then uh, actually it will be but in future we have a plan future because because it's not a yesterday the tomorrow actually we just start this session but it's a right. year long process so we can discuss and we can arrange in okay. ibm tv yeah, because we can stream on ibm tv or if you record it we can record it and then put it on ibm tv depending on yes, how yes. you're you're doing it with yes. the uh, production team back in uh, raleigh and um uh, and then New Delhi. So either yes. way, we could get the yes. program. This way, I could see the whole program on IBM TV. Um, don't worry, don't worry. Actually, actually, uh, uh, if you, if you want the next few, like next ten years, you want to be very busy. We have that kind of that kind of plans. I, I told you, millions. We have uh, connections with the millions of the young and youth community, and I am very much action oriented. Yeah. So hopefully, if you, if you, if you want to be busy, <laughs> I think I think uh, you you will enjoy the, our 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 sessions and our our. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You said there were like three hundred educational institutions. Three hundred school. schools, yes. or something like that. Some yes, yes. Even, even, uh, yeah, we we have. I, I told you, uh, very simple. I am not for millionaires. I'm for millions. So so hopefully uh, you will you will you will uh, yes. Uh, so you will enjoy. We have okay. millions of people. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, you're forgiven for that, but that's okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. 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 Even, yes, even you the tomorrow session, you were scaring Nick over there for a second. He thought he had to learn a new language. Well, I, I, I was pulling out my Travis the translator literally last night. I was learning Bengali. Okay. Yeah. So I was going to speak in Bengali, yes. and then I realized it's going to take me a while to learn the yes. whole language. But I was yes. going to say some Bengali words. Yes. Everybody. Yeah. I think everybody. And we need more more support. We need more collaboration. We need more intellectual. The more we can make breathing with the different uh, people, different cultural people, different, yeah. uh, are, 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 I want to these, welcome everyone. Are these educators from Beng Bangladesh? Are they from Malaysia or no. both or where? No, both of the way. India, okay. India, you know, India, India also, Kolkata, okay, right. Kolkata, Ashams, yeah. all of them are right. Bangladeshi, Bangla yeah. language. Yeah. Even right. in Bangladesh, yes. Even you see that Bangla actually the seventh uh, position and a huge amount of people okay. actually, they're using Bangla language. But this is the this is the things and definitely we try to bring uh, like we invite you means like we want to integrate it with international community and hopefully uh, we will invite more we have more session we will arrange more interesting sessions so so yeah. Yeah, because Jeff Brown, who's the dean of the University of Illinois Business School, is highly interested in what you're doing because they have about 4,000 international students right now at the University of Illinois where he runs the um, IMBA program. His MBA program, Master's in Business Administration, is all online. So at yes. University of Illinois, they have all these people from all over the world <laughs> that go there. And uh, so he's very interested in uh, what you're doing uh, <laughs> And so I want to make sure you get together with Jeff. I hope you have his email address. He's on every yes. Monday, almost every Monday at uh, on IBM TV. But great guy doing great work with a great program at the University of Illinois uh, Business School. And they have a master's in science and management, which is also mm -hmm. all online. So uh, at, at Northeastern, where I teach, we've been online for 10 years. So we, uh, the graduate tax is all online. So all I've been doing is online presentations for the last decade. So when COVID-19 hit, it really didn't change much for what we, we do. But uh, other, other educational institutions, COVID-19 hit and they're going like, what are we gonna do? You know, mm -hmm. and th then we find out, uh, Sharif, that a lot of people, they don't have high speed internet or internet mm -hmm. at all. Have you run into that issue uh, where people just don't have access to the internet? Uh, in in Malaysia, this is not a problem, but in other countries, I I find that this is problem. Uh, example: I I I have communications with Nepal. Nepal has this kind of problem, but we are trying to solve these things because we have few engineers, young engineers, those who are working for the free internet access and other things. Yeah. So we are trying to collaborate with them and trying to solve. Yes, different okay. country has internet related oh. problem. But definitely, we yeah. can we can. Talk you, you, you know, Sharif, I'll hook you up with Shambu Parkroll. I don't know if you, or have you run into him. He heads up uh, the Biz um, Nepal, and he sits mm -hmm. on our board at IBM TV. If you okay. haven't, I'll I'll get you with Shambu. He's a great guy. He actually we started our, our original programming. Our first international program was actually with Shambu Parkroll out of uh, Kathmandu, Nepal. And um, he mm -hmm. came in really clear, but he runs uh, a he runs the the business television network in Nepal. 
if you want mm -hmm. a good contact there. And he's very, mm -hmm. um, very open-minded, very mm -hmm. um, driven to bring mm -hmm. Nepal um, up. And I wanted to always go there because I just wanted to go to Kathmandu. <laughs> you want to go to Kathmandu? That's all it is. Yes. But so, Therese, just a real quick question. Yeah. Are y'all having the rural area covered as well? Because that's the issue here in uh, North Carolina and throughout the United States. Um, definitely the cities have uh, fairly decent internet um, exposure, but it's when you get to the rural towns that it's not as easy. So um, where you are, is uh, there's a lot of access mm -hmm. in the rural communities because that's the issue yes. here in the United States. Mm -hmm. In, in, in Malaysia, actually, Malaysia, Singapore is actually very good. Even example, you do not uh, find the too much of difference. So let's, let's say I live in Subangja, Subangja, Kuala Lumpur, even say Johor Bahru, we, you cannot find uh, infrastructure wise and uh, internet connections and other things very good. This is not issue, but definitely in South Asia, uh, it's it's really really issues. Let's say country like Nepal, even sometimes India, Bangladesh, uh, they have different issues. But we have to handle uh, different rural, uh, uh, remote areas people. So uh, we what we do naturally, like example in in example in a rural area, we try to give them internets and other uh, necessary support. Uh, we are, I do not want to say we are hundred percent successful, but we are still trying. Even definitely with mm -hmm. the collaboration of government, because every government, even let's say Indian government, Bangladesh government, uh, uh, every government, they have some good initiative. Definitely they have some good initiative and they are really investing a lot of money for that. But you have to know how to take these opportunities. So uh, this is the things I manage uh, uh, sometimes. And uh, uh, yes, hopefully it will be improved. It will be improved step by step. Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah. we have to create a lot of online content and uh, uh, we have to forward to them. And that is the that is the things that we need more international community because my major development uh, uh, happened when in 2012, I first go to Oxford University. I, I say that, that that's the amazing experience I get from Oxford University, Side Business School, Oxford Union, Cambridge Union. This is the main exposure I get from international community. And, um, and, and, and this is very, very important, very, very important because the main problem every human being is a thought process. So we have to change our thought process. So the more we can, uh, these people, like there is a millions and millions young, young community, the more they engage with uh, the uh, international community, they can change their thought process. They can think in different way. You see that if you see the res do research on Jack Ma, you find that Jack Ma also gets some interesting learning from USA, right? So then he can understand the uh, strength of uh, uh, like internet and uh, and uh, different, different things. So my objective is that let's say uh, Professor Nick maybe uh, expend his 20 minutes of time, but it will be very effective for 300 uh, schools. They have more than 30,000 students. So like example, the 300 schools teachers, when they enlightened by, let's say, 20 minutes of his speech, how many millions of dollars it values. I think it's, it will be life changing. So that's why always we prefer, even I want to invite everyone, the more international community, even it's from academia, it's from politics, it's from, uh, example, corporation, it's from business experience, no matter. But we should interact more. We have to communicate more. We have to create more breezing in the rural area because more you go to the remote area, you find that like they, ha they are very capable. They are very potential. They are very positive, but they do not know how to achieve the objective. So this kind of things actually for motivational aspect. So maybe 20 minutes of time is a... Uh, very important for 20 you. 20 minutes is perfect. We discussed that just before on IBM TV. Uh, Didn't somebody say that 20 minutes is the optimal amount to do, yes. deliver a speech? Yeah, Hello? It was, it was Hello? Not, Hello? not two minutes. No, it's not TikTok, baby. It's not TikTok. TikTok, one minute. Goodbye. Forget TikTok. <laughs> okay. No, no. I, minutes, I, like, yes. Uh, hey, Nick, speaking of TikTok, did you hear that there was another band recently? I was watching on the news before jumping on this conversation, and I saw that Pakistan has banned Tinder and something called Grinder, and I think a couple of other dating apps. So Pakistan has decided that they don't like those apps for their young folks. So I just saw that come across one of my news feeds. So I don't know what you think of that or the rest of the panel thinks, but Pakistan has jumped on board and said that they're not having that and they're banning those apps and everything. Really? 
really. I, I don't know how they ban those things, though. You know, uh, mm-hmm. there's a guy who sits on our board who I, I want everybody to introduce to, Kanwal Mashur from Pakistan. He runs uh, Tech TV in Pakistan. So I'm going to try to get him on board so he can explain how they do that and what That's they're doing over easy. there. Because, it's pretty uh, easy. Okay, how do, how do we ban people? Uh, well, person? you don't ban people. You actually ban the access to. Uh, they, they use it in Italy for for um, to to avoid that people is using streaming. Uh, stream, stream, um, I mean, uh, illegal or pirate streaming TV or like I don't know, uh, watch on ESPN from from Italian without paying the or watching Sky TV without paying the uh, the, the, the the fee, the annual fee or whatever it is. You just basically uh, it, there is a mechanism where you can <coughs> uh, you can um, impose to the company that whatever <coughs> sorry whatever access coming from an IP uh, from Pakistan is basically rejected. Hmm. Okay. Or uh, that's that's the way China works. I mean, in yeah. China when. It, the, the way to circumvent, I shouldn't say this because next time I will be in China, they will get me. But in, you, if you have a private a VPN, you can access also Google and uh, and whatever and Facebook basically. Uh, if because the VPN puts you not in China basically, while when you have a Chinese IP, uh, have, uh, both both Facebook and, and Google are are. Are basically uh, forbidden, but you can't access access them. So you have to go if you have if you want to make a, a Google search, you have to use Bing. Bing, oh, really? The one, okay. Yeah, which means that basically you 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 can't find yourself on on on, on Bing. That's it's the I say it's, it's the worst. It's the world stuff. that we live in now, uh, Roberto. Yeah. But yeah, the article says that Pakistan on Tuesday blocked access to Tinder and several other dating apps in a bid to control "quote unquote" immoral and indecent content. Just days after regulators threatened to shut down YouTube for similar reasons, so they're saying that YouTube, which I know we use as well, is uh, doing. Uh, yeah. having immoral and indecent content. So the Pakistan Telecommunication Authority said it had uh, barred users from accessing Tinder, Grinder, Say Hi, Tagged, and Scout after the social networking apps failed to moderate content in accordance with Pakistan's law. So they're oh, just well, I mean, the immoral the content. Did they I think ban chess stars? Chess stars? Are safe. They're going to be able to see chess stars in Pakistan. They, 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 yeah, I think chess stars is safe. And IBM TV, I'm thinking about all the um, what type of content that they banned. Are we going to be get banned in Pakistan? I don't think uh, we're banned. Let me in go Pakistan. back to that article. The, real, the only, only thing, con- but they said that it was immoral and indecent content. So I okay. think that we're all right. I haven't heard anybody do anything that was immoral or indecent but uh you know but their gonna definition of that and our definition yeah, but, may but not we, be the same but, but so we stream, uh, that's we what stream they're saying that they're through, doing yeah but what jim is saying we stream through youtube if they haven't banned youtube we're still streaming into pakistan and the only uh, i'll talk to kanwa masur about this to find out what we can do the only two countries i know because i we get a lot of reports from over a hundred countries around the world that have seen IBM TV. The only two countries we haven't got real strong reports is China and Russia. That's the reason I was asking Roberto, I'm wondering if our feed is getting through China and Russia or we're being I, I, stopped. I, 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 don't, I, I actually don't remember. I have to check next time I'm in China, but I can't remember if you can actually access YouTube on, on uh, from China. Yeah. I, but, but, I, but our feed is getting uh, everywhere else because I get reports uh, that we're, we're being seen in over 100 countries. And I, I was even in Italy last year just to check. I, I flew to Italy so I could check to make sure I could see IBM <laughs> TV from Italy. Hey, you know, it was, yeah, hey, look. It was yeah, yes. Uh, um, yeah, Sasha, tell us about IBM TV and oh, Asia. Okay, first of all, I want to tell you that U.S. is not much better than uh, Pakistan or whatever the other countries are. Because I remember uh, about a year ago, um, uh, U.S. chess champion Jennifer Shahada, uh, she came to Toronto specifically for one reason. She wanted to play one of the European uh, online poker tournaments, and she couldn't do it while being on the territory of United States of America. 
But as long as she was in Canada, she could easily do that. She, that's exactly what she did. So um, I don't know what is worse, the uh, IBM TV in Pakistan or uh, or European poker tournament in US. <laughs> you tell me that. Now, one more observation. The one minute presentation, it's a not new idea at all and not even American idea. It was invented about 200 years ago in Europe. If you remember uh, the uh, great Polish composer uh, Chopin, he wrote a minute waltz. Right. And it runs exactly one minute. And right. but I was in a concert of uh, Victor Borge. And Victor Borge, while playing, oh, there, right. he said, he, he looked at his watch and says, Oh my God, my plan leaves in 40 minutes. And he finished in double tempo. Right. <laughs> and, 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 and no, you're right about that, Sasha. And even chess is played in one minute. I don't know if you guys know this. Oh, no, 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 no. There's already a half minute game and 15 seconds. It's coming. Kind of yeah, they actually do chess sure. that way. So the thing is, but what I'm saying, I guess, is what what, what is that is a the quality of your chess game in one minute or the quality of your hamburger in one minute isn't mm -hmm. going to be as good as the quality of your game in 20 minutes it's, or an hour or so. It's not a matter of good or bad. I mean, it's different. It's something different. It's like yeah. I mean, it's like a marathon and a, a hundred a hundred yeah. meters right. run. It's it's a different. It's different sports and it's a difference. Uh, it's 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 a it's a different way of approaching things. Uh, right. I mean, I, I don't I don't want to judge if it's better or worse. Of course, you can, you have, you can have maybe. In, 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 in a 20 minute speech you will have a lot of information which which are which are very interesting but not so useful or you you will forget them but uh, and in one minute you get the core and and the, and, 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 and the, the essential mm -hmm. part of it I mean I, 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 one of the things I've seen now is that webinars for example lawyer webinars, um, they start. We started something like three, four years ago with webinars, following the webinars, and it was one hour. Even if you're at your desk after thirty minutes, you you start answering calls and and doing other hundred hundred things and, and stuff. And and now I've seen that one of the best seminars is actually one of with one organized one from Jackson Walker, which is one of the it's a the. Mm -hmm. Texas law firm, which is is part of Global Law, they have these webinars of ten minutes, and and ten minutes of of Q and A. So the guy says only with the things which are essential, so you get really the point. And then if if you have a question A, you can ask there, or if you are a client, you pay them mm -hmm. to get and, quest, to and get also the, the key thing here is to know your audience. Because if you have a 20 minute presentation for people with an attention span of one minute, it's not going to be effective. And we know this in venture capital is in, in um, Silicon Valley because you do not have a whole lot of time to waste when you go there. So you have to be prepared to give a very quick mm -hmm. presentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, so so I, I, I agree. agree. Lev Salkis spent a lot of time <laughs> on his book <laughs> and he sold 9,000 copies because his audience is only 9,000 people. Who played the modern Benoni? Were, were, were you in the room with Lev Sakis when he made that statement about the books? We were in the car. Oh, okay. And he told you that he sold nine thousand, and you told him you sold a million. And he was, he was, he said he was very jealous. He but should be. Okay. He, well, just, he, but I knew my audience, and right. he knew his audience. He can't expect more than nine thousand copies to sell, and I could expect a generation after generation to buy my book because I knew my audience, my target <laughs> audience. And when you're giving a presentation, you should know who your audience is, how long you can maintain their attention span, and how long they have to pay attention to you. And if you know your audience, you can tailor it. Maybe it's one minute, maybe it's three minutes, maybe it's 20 minutes. But you, you have know, to know You, you know, Jim, Jim uh, when we told David K. Johnson about it, who's a Pulitzer Prize winner, yes. he was impressed because he knows how hard it is. The average uh, book well, he, sales would be like less than 2,000. You know, yeah, he should definitely it. be impressed. Jim has done a great job with that book, and the job will probably sell ten million or maybe even a yeah. billion. But we don't, and I'm expecting it to go even greater because he just did a great job with it. But I agree with what y'all are saying about because at one of the cultural centers that I work at, we've actually hosted some pitch competitions, and those pitch competitions, I think that they're given three minutes at the max, maybe five, and 
they have to know their audience. Like Jim was saying, they have to know that audience and they have to tailor the message in order to try to win that money if they're going for money. Because if they don't, and I've seen some folks lose it because they try to go too rambling, go too far, and they're usually not the ones that win those competitions. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I see that Sasha's Alexander. got something he wants to add. Yeah, Alexander has uh, yeah, Yes, very important point. Uh, Jim, you know how you get undivided attention for your presentation, at least for one minute? Uh, if you go for whoever you want to present your idea, once in a while, that person must attend the uh, toilet, right? So once he's a toilet <laughs> and let's see he's peeing, you have undivided attention for one minute and you just present your idea and whether he likes it or not, he has to at least listen to that. There is oh. no escape, right? Yeah, in New York, they actually have ads in the New York toilets because of absolutely, that. Absolutely, absolutely. So I think New York it was a great one-minute toilet presentation. I think right. Yeah, we can't, say can't, elevator. We say Sorry? elevator, not toilet. Yeah, yeah, but but see, the thing is, in Washington D.C. a lot of people. <laughs> okay, Bill. Bill is limited to five minutes because of some technical things. I'd have to ask the d directors uh, on IBM TV. So you got to do it five minutes or less when you're watching yeah. the report because of blah blah blah. And the thing is, I think a great delivery system for the Washington Report in Washington D.C. We should go put the report in the toilets because they're always go there and they're so <laughs> full of it. So the thing is, they would actually listen yeah. to them. They Washington. have videos in some, yeah. And they absolutely. have videos in some, so we yeah, have but a you new, know, I, I pay absolute system. attention to Bill for five minutes. And if his show is an hour, I don't know if I could have paid attention for an hour. But yeah, five well, well minutes, he's, oh, he's, he's, he's He's going to have a, a new minute. show. Anybody can pay attention to Bill for an hour. He captivates well, us for uh, easily no an hour. No slam on Bill. It's my attention span we're talking about now. That's I don't true. know if I can concentrate on any of you for an hour. I'll bring a juggler, Jim. I'll bring a juggler and have them in the corner. You know. Well, there you go. Now you're talking. <laughs> well, well, well he has, he's still going to do his five minutes, but he's going to also have an hour show on American politics. Yeah. And I can't wait. That's going to start after Labor Day. And uh, actually, the, the guy that was a senator from Florida introduced – me to you, you to me, Roberto. I'm going to see if I can get him on uh, Bill's show. And we have another senator who, uh, Joe Mannion. Do you know him or he heard of him before? Okay. Uh, tomorrow, one of his top aides is going to be on IBM TV tomorrow. So we're going to talk to her about getting that senator on your show. Okay. So we're going to send you some senators to talk to. I don't know why you'd want to talk to senators, but um, oh, no. yeah, that, that's your yeah, problem, yeah, not yeah. mine. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, 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 uh, maybe. If I may, it, it is, sure. uh, it, it's what you said uh, a short time ago, the words of wisdom. Um, if somebody has a passion and would be doing it, even if they never got paid, that means that that's their life purpose. So uh, right. talk to the senators. Uh, in that vein to me. So, Nick, uh, I, I'm a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> Most of us well, on here are. Is, you like being a nerd. That's a good thing. <laughs> but speaking of nerds, I got a non-nerd activity that I got to ask Nick about, and I'm just curious what his thoughts are, because I was watching uh, the governor's presentation. Apparently, he, here in North Carolina, we've gone from phase two to 2.5, whatever that means, so we're not right. quite at phase yeah. three. But one of the things they were talking about was these party buses. And apparently they're allowed, but I'm trying to figure out how you have a party bus because there can't be any social distancing at a party bus. So it's like a bunch of college kids that are stuck there and they're like very limited space. So I was just wondering your thoughts on that. I thought that the governor kind of evaded that question, but I was just wondering, well, choose out of party buses and how they can even have a party bus. I don't know how they can do that. It's not really my cup of tea. I'm not a big party person. I, I, in my younger, more halcyon days, I was playing. I was a chess nerd, so I played uh, chess. So that's how, where I, where I really do appreciate the suffering that Jim went through during his entire yes. lifetime, and also the suffering that Sasha went through during his adult lifetime. Because chess nerds operate in a whole different world. They play for passion, not for profits. Because you ever play chess and try to make money at it? You realize after a while you better be playing for passion because you can't make any. I'm not. You can't make any money. But like Sasha said, the top ten in the world make all the money, and everybody else gets nothing. I mean, it's it's horrible unless you write a book. Unless you write a book like, <laughs> like, like Jim did. <laughs> but I can relate to being a chess nerd because yeah. I actually um, in high school I was a member of two clubs that were uh, three clubs that were very nerdy. I was a member of the debate club. I was a member of the newspaper staff, and yes. Jim and Sasha, y'all will be glad to know 
I don't know how I did there. I don't think I won any games, but I was a member of the chess club. So it shows oh, up in my year. Chess player. Oh, <laughs> sorry to hear that, Mark. Team patch. Thank you. I got it. Bring, bring, that, bring that pain patch on. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, that is a community of passion because obviously the profits aren't there. The, there's a site called chess.com, which has one over 100 million people. All. I mean, go go Google it sometime, chess.com. You go, 100 million people? Are that many sick people in this country? I mean, world? Yes. It's a worldwide site. And on any given day, they'll have 100,000 people playing chess. Like right now, as we're talking on IBM TV, they're playing chess on the internet, you know, and Lee Chess, if you want to play on that one, it's free kind of, I play on that a lot. Um, they have over 70, 80,000 people right now playing on Lee Chess. It's amazing to see the cult following that you that exists in chess. It's pretty big, but it's it's more by passion than profits because the, um, you know, the prof profits aren't there for uh, chess players. And with the, the, the startup community, uh, you know, we were talking about, I, I'm, I always look for does the person have their passion involved in it? Is this sort of like you said, life purpose? Or is it right. something that you want to make profits? Right. Because if you just want to make profits, you ain't gonna work 12 hours a day because you're gonna you're gonna quickly say, wait a minute, I can make more going to a regular job. Uh, and uh, they're they're not going to put their heart and soul into their business, they're going to put uh, it there so they get a paycheck. And if they want a paycheck, that's great. They should go get a job somewhere else because that's what like you have to be very careful on, on what passion they have because if they instead of chess if, if they are the great passionate beer pong players this could be the result a little bit difficult yeah but there's other there's other awesome. passions there are other passions that are very difficult you know but i went to law school because law school um wasn't a complete passion but the thing is i did like to eat well roberto Okay, and and whether the non-lawyers want to hear it or not, my dad used to tell me, "Well, the poor lawyer does better than the the um, good whatever." So the thing is, because even if you're a bad lawyer, you're still gonna make more money than the good whatever. So, yeah. so, yeah, so I mean, it made it made I, I, one of one of the biggest startup in in the world now is 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 actually a European, actually not in the, yeah, yeah, I think in the world like, it's a it's a beer company, a brewery. Uh, done by uh, started by two um, Scottish guys. It's called uh, Beer Dog. No, Beer Dog, Dog Beer or Dog Beer. Yeah. And, and and basically they claim that they started this 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 start the the, the, the startup because they were actually addicted to beer. They were right. junkies basically. And now the, the the company is worth two and a half billion euros. And they already have breweries in in Europe and in the US. Yeah. And they have yeah. something like 25, 26 pubs around the world. Yeah. Beer but, is but, pretty but, but, but it was their it was their I don't passion. know why I would know that, but I do. Yeah, yeah, but it was their passion, Roberta, that got them there. It wasn't yeah, they, well, they didn't go right for the I mean, profits. Yeah, but sometimes I mean you can have a passion. I mean I understand the idea of passion, which is which is perfect, and and it's it's uh, it's driving force or whatever. It's it's only that sometimes passions like I don't know if you are holding on a uh, football addicted, uh, it's a great passion, but it drives you more or less where chess play, chess playing drives you. And only that chess well by playing chess you get some your your mind back bigger and better. And uh, if you're a hooligan or a football fan, you get uh, every day more stupid and more concerned about your team and the rest of the world. And, 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 I'm, I, and I'm a huge I'm football with uh -huh. soccer, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and, and I'm a... People even wind up switching their passions because I've got a very dear friend that is actually in that same business. They're in the uh, spirit liquor business, but they actually had their own liquor company, Southern Wicked, but they are now in the hand sanitizer business because they pretty much switched all of their business to hand sanitizers because when COVID kept, took place, they had to do that um, all favored pivot. That's everybody's favorite word because we're all pivoting left and right. So they did that pivot and now I think they still have a little bit of the liquor as a product, but their number one product is the uh, hand sanitizer. Yes, sir, Nobody right. has a passion for hand sanitizer. You can't no. get that over me. No. So I'm sorry. 
That's business. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It was a business decision. I think that as soon as we ever get COVID back in control, they're going back to concentrating on what they love doing, which is the whole liquor business. And it was like a family business. And it was something that was very much in their family, something they were interested in for a number of years. So I agree with you, Jim. They're going to switch back. Yeah, because how, how do you drink hand sanitizer? I've yet to figure that one out. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Trump told us to. Do you remember? Oh, Jim, let's be honest here. Not only Trump told us to, but did we have a doctor here on our own show that also told us that that was all right? Because I think we, you were we on have that doctors episode. on Friday. For those who visited IBM TV tomorrow, we're going to have podcaster Thursday and following immediately following this show, which I think is 20 minutes, going to be investing with Sasha. So we want to make sure everybody tunes into the investment with Sasha. You are uh, all show. welcome to our show. All show, right? Yes. I have to leave you now to prepare. Yes. Because he's going to prepare for his show, Investing with that. Sasha. On IBM TV Wednesday, uh, make sure you go to that. And uh, on Podcasters Thursday, we're going to have the smartest person ever. Uh, Rick Rosner is going to be joining us, uh, uh, who actually had the highest IQ in the world. And um, it's been verified. Go go Google his name, Rick, R-I-C. Okay. I've known yeah, him for Jim years. Jim's already. I see I that. Over there and I'm going to try to steal. Out. I'm going to try to steal Timur Garev, who's from uh, Jim's show, because he didn't put on this week. I'm going to try to get him ahead of time to be in the same room with Rick Rosner. Have you because, ever shaken his hand, Timur's no, hand? No, I don't. I, 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 yeah, what what happened? And you're so, stealing I mean, him from me. Of course, I know. I'm going to steal him from him because I'm the guy who gave him to you, sort of. But you already knew who he was. But that's wait a minute, story. y'all are like stealing but from the, each other. That's just not right. But the important he thing knows about who I you. am. I know who he is. And no you, one knows who you're I am. You're giving him to me. Oh, well, and whatever. It's, it's one of my. It's, it's one of my uh, king king generosity, whatever you want to call it. Yes, thank <laughs> you. You're, you're having a king moment, Nick. Well, we appreciate that, and I'm sure Jim appreciates it as well. By the way, and I just want to let folks know before we still got 25 minutes on the show and everything but y'all will be glad to know speaking of other shows we've got the online dinner party gym the quiz will be going on we will have the two mystery guests one of the mystery guests will be international i've already done my research so it'll be some international person won't tell you who or where they're from you're gonna have to read the clues to figure it out and one will be i decided a sports figure so it'll be a sports figure from uh, the united states so it will be a united states sports figure can't tell you who and what sport they're in because it might not be what you think it is but oh, no. the international person, this is my clue, and y'all can start Googling, but it's an international person that had as a pet a lion. And yes, they had as a pet a lion. So really? it's an international oh. person who had as a pet a lion. And then we've got some other great guests. There's actually going to be somebody talking about a very serious issue. We know that we lost the great Chadwick Boseman yeah, to colon yeah. cancer. So Dr. Fola May will be on talking about the importance of getting our colons tested and all of that right at the beginning of the show. She's actually from your neck of the woods, Jim. She's from UCLA. So she'll be joining us at that time. And then I'll have a long conversation with um, Dr. Carl Kenny, who is a liberation theologist. So that will be going on. And then I think I've got a musician coming on as well. So we'll have an engaging dinner party with all of these great folks. And that's who's lined up right now. But do remember that at least one of the mystery guests has a lion connected to their life. So IBM TV, we, even though we can't have that, uh, the real lions, we're going to have a lion pop up as a uh, clue. Yeah, yeah, and with all of our exciting guests coming on IBM TV, this is going to give Bill Trezevant uh, a, a little push on his American politics because he's got to get more exciting guests because, like, we're having the smartest guy ever in the world okay. show up tomorrow on IBM TV, along with a guy who sets the world record for blindfold chess, 48 games simultaneous, blindfold Timur Garov is going to be on our show. And so, Bill, you got to get your Washington guys up to speed to be on your show on American mm-hmm. politics because you can always take the smartest guy in the world and put him with one of your Washington guys, which would be pretty cool, and see, see what happens. See the fireworks, you know. Because remember, these, these Washington, D.C. guys think they're the smartest guys in the room. But see, we're going to bring the real smartest guys in the right. room with them and right. then see, see what they do. Ah, right, but, you know, right, right, right. Politics will be, be uh, something interesting. And then, of course, Sharif runs the Sharif School of Economics, which is a great show. I saw it the other day. But I always watch it recorded, Sharif, because it's five o'clock in the morning here. So I I, I go check out the recorded uh, version. But um, yeah, for those uh, people that are tuning into IBM TV, we got a really great lineup coming in. And then in Monday, we have two on our Economics Monday. Already got confirmed uh, two billion dollar plus 
money managers. They both own firms that manage over a billion dollars each. They're going to be on uh, Business Monday along with the um, the entertainment attorney who actually is the biggest entertainment attorney in the world probably who did all the entertainment law for a um, uh, company that did Star Wars. And I think that was pretty famous at one point in time. Anyway, that's on Business Economics Monday. And then Friday, of course, we're going to have our, our our doctor lineup, you know, medical experts from all over the world are going to speak on Medical Friday. But we have a couple new exciting shows that are being lined up. A trivia show. We're going to have Trivia Tuesday. It's coming on board. We already have some people doing that. And a Hollywood reporter is going to be coming on board. So we have that being lined up. Uh, well, so we, we already run Celebrity Tuesday, and yeah. Henning Morales is on Celebrity Tuesday, but we're going to get a Hollywood reporter so we can find out what's going on in Tinseltown. Since um, I discovered something I didn't know, that all the talent, in case you guys don't know, all the talent is within a 10-mile radius of Hollywood. Okay, and the rest of us, we have well, that's account. what Henny tried to tell us, and I don't know that I necessarily <laughs> no, told me that I've got friends times. that are actors in New York, I've got friends that are actors in Atlanta and Chicago, and they're doing uh pretty right. well with the profession. So, I remember Henning telling us that, and I don't know that I necessarily agree with his thought pattern that it's all in LA, but he's uh, he's entitled to that belief, yeah, so. he's entitled to that. But, but, but uh, IBM TV that's uh, comes out of the Research Triangle Park in New Delhi, India. We're going to have our say in terms of what goes on internationally, you yeah. know. So uh, we're going to respond to that. No problem with that, Mr. Mark. Right. We're going to respond to that because there is there is some talent, maybe not as much, wow. tiny little bits outside of <laughs> I LA. Yeah. And, and 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 there is a world outside of Los Angeles, right? Yes, that yeah. I know of, you know. But this is this is LA. There's no doubt it is a world outside of Los Angeles. I do have a question for Sharif yeah. and everything, because you know, you're talking about the, how hard it is for you to get up at 5 30. After seeing both Sharif and Shaquille on these shows at what I believe is like around midnight or something like that or 2 a.m. their time, I'm beginning to think that they don't really sleep. So I'm thinking that Sharif and Shaquille don't no, really no, ever it, go to sleep. I, I, I think I, they I, stay up 24-7. I always know what time Sharif is because I just take my watch. Let's see, it's 20 till 1 uh, in the afternoon here, which means it's 20 till 1 p.m. in the evening in Malaysia. So I've, I've got Malaysian time down to a science. <laughs> They're completely on the opposite clock that we're on. Yes. You know, so, but Sharif stays up uh, late at night just to be with us on IBM TV. And we certainly appreciate that, that you actually uh, you. do that. Thank and all the stuff you're doing for IBM TV and hopefully it will make a positive impact on the Pan-Asian area. But so far they made a positive impact on us because I can tell you confidentially, I've told a lot of people out Malaysia in their containment of COVID-19. And I've had some very intelligent, knowledgeable people give mm -hmm. me a, you're kidding me look. Mm -hmm. In other words, they didn't even know uh, that um, you guys have contained COVID-19 over there. Uh, last time I checked, 125 deaths, 125 total, Bill. Listen to you you guys in water. 125 total on a population of 32 million people. 125 total deaths. Not 1,000 a day, which you guys are doing in Washington, uh, yeah. D.C. Oh. Not 180,000, which is what they did here. 125. So, you know, you guys in Washington have to learn there's another countries out there. Well, Malaysia is one of them, buddy. Bangladesh. I mean, the Pan-Asian countries, well, they're here. And well, what we have to learn is how, how, how can we support what our mission in IBM TV? And the only way I think is we need sponsors. <laughs> and our sponsor, oh, just arrived. How hey, lucky was that? We're not amazing. Amazing. <laughs> family dollar <laughs> store. Gosh, we got lucky. Our sponsor showed up just in time because out, without any money, the engines of IBM TV just don't crank. I mean, that's it. You know, without money, the engines of IBM TV don't crank. But with it, we do crank a little bit. So tell us about the uh, Family Dollar Store, uh, Lynn, our sponsor. First of all, um, you know, I, I, I've loved getting to know uh, Bill. And I'm, I'm telling you, he's rivaling you, Nick, on the transition um, to uh, the dollar store from whatever you're talking about. 
I mean, he can he can get us there pretty quickly, just oh, as you right. did. But I but I, that was that was maybe one of the best transitions. No, that was the yes, best transition was. I've ever heard him do, Lynn. And uh, you, you right there, you popped in, and you're gonna do an amazing well, job. I do have yeah. a quick question, non dollar store related, because I know you're a sports fan. So how are your sports teams doing? And all of that, because I know that you're a diehard. Uh, I believe it's baseball, and there's some other sports. But I'm just curious as to how your sports teams are doing. Well, keep your fingers crossed, because baseball is my favorite, and uh, the Phillies seem to be doing a little bit better. Knock on wood. Um, and um, uh, the uh, Flyers um, were down three to one, and now they're down three to two. Uh, and in a in in a uh, four games wins it all series. So, I mean, in, in four wins, wins it all series. So they still have uh, two games to go. Hopefully they win both. Um, the Biggles, as I like to call them, um, because I, I instead of the Eagles, and Bill, that's all right, you can keep your uh, Buffalo Bills uh, helmet. But but yes. the, big, the Biggles, as I call them, um, I've often said they play like a bunch of dogs, so I call them the Biggles. And... Um, um, but but we're hoping they're going to have a good team, Mark. Um, but I, let's, I hope that all but, your teams do well and everything, and I definitely want you to get to the Dallas store and everything. But I can relate to um, Bill and his Buffalo Bills and everything because, you know, I'm actually a diehard fan of the other team that went to the Super Bowl several times and lost every time. So I've been, even though I'm in North Carolina, I'm a diehard fan and have been a lifelong fan of the Minnesota Vikings. So me and Bill have that in common. We've got teams that have, Made it to the well, Super Bowl, but then they seem to do that thing called choking. Well, wait a minute. Minnesota has won the Super Bowl several times, whereas whereas uh, Buffalo never has, unfortunately. But that's, you know, yeah, you know, I, it's just so funny that uh, in the rest of the world, uh, we look down on uh, such sustained excellence and coming in number two four years in a row. Because I happen to know there were 30 other teams that wished they were there. So, sure, so, sure. Yeah, so, Billy, and, Billy, no, actually, Billy, as a fan, I can tell you, Minnesota never won the Super Bowl. They've been they never there, did. They've never I won. thought they did. Then nope. they lost to Pittsburgh. But anyway, we'll look that up. Let's right. talk. Let's talk about the dollar store. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Um, First of all, thank you very much. Um, yes, uh, our family owns an online dollar store. Don't confuse us with the family dollar store, which is a brick and mortar store, but we do call ours family.dollarstore.com. Now, um, you don't even have to know that because if you go on IBM TV, because we are a sponsor of Money Masters PBS, and Money Masters PBS owns IBM TV. If you go onto the IBM TV website, click on the big round button. It is green, um, but but for those of you who are colorblind, and twelve percent of the men uh, are. So so we just make it big and round so that everybody can click on it. It takes you right right to the website. Unfortunately, as Sharif knows, because he's heard me probably more time. I'm surprised he hasn't dropped off while I'm on, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> but but, but Sh Sharif knows. Sh Sharif knows that unfortunately we can't deliver to Malaysia or to Bangladesh or to India yeah. or, or to uh, Willie in um, in Melbourne. Yeah. Um, um, but part of Willie's problem is he doesn't speak the same kind of English that we do. And so I'm not sure that's, uh, we have a little uh, difficulty understanding. Well, actually, I understand him better than I do Kimberly from North Carolina, but that's beside the point. Um, so, so uh, but now back, back to the dollar store, okay? Because I can see Bill's getting very serious here and he's waiting for me to, oh, Minion, Kimberly's with us today. Minion napkins. So okay. look at that. She put it in the chat. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so um, well, she says, sorry, I'm not with you, but she put it in the chat. Um, but the good news is that we're, we, are, we are giving half of our profit to uh, Money Masters PBS to support the mission. And what's the mission? The mission is to reduce the gap between poverty and financial sustainability by providing financial education that results in financial fitness. And we'll get to the five aspects of financial fitness in a minute. 
but but the, the, for now until the end of September, we are giving 100% of our profit to um, Money Masters PBS uh, because we really believe in the mission and we want people to support Money Masters PBS. Now, we also have another benefit just by signing up to become a customer. We have a, a gift token program, which is just like getting gift cards from Target or CVS or Macy's or any of the other big stores. You, you can get gift tokens. And it's, a, it's both a rewards program, but a program where we give you to start out some gift tokens to start using when you shop. And when you sign up to become a customer, you immediately get $5 worth of gift tokens. But, and I decided to extend this through the end of September, anybody who signs up is going to get an additional $5 worth of gift tokens. Okay. Because we want you to shop. We want you to support Money Masters PBS. We want you to support the mission. And we have lots of products. Um, now, Mark, how many products do we have now? Oh, you keep adding count, so I've lost track, but I know that I was at some, like, ridiculous number, and you keep adding them, so I get lost. So you need to tell me the number again. Okay. Go ahead, Bill. Go, go. Over 4,300, I believe. Bill, you're absolutely right. Actually, we're going to get, we're going to send a quiz to Sharif so he can participate so that he knows, or we'll send him a cheat sheet. That's yeah. what we'll do. Yeah. So, so anyway, but we do have over 4,300 items. And every time Mark says, well, I'm going to look at more, we put more on because right. we never want them to get to the end. But we have great products. I mean, one of the products we have is face masks. Okay. Now. Ah. These these are three ply face masks, and if Jim were here, um, we'd make sure he kept his on because these really work. Uh, when the blue side is out, you keep people from getting um, getting the viruses. If the blue side is in, you protect yourself. So when Jim is here, we want him to wear it all the time because we're concerned about computer viruses. Oh, yeah. And so we are very we we prefer that he wears his, but. Okay, now Bill, you're yeah. you're you're on almost immediately here. Okay, we have a box of fifty, and we sell them for twenty five dollars. Now I didn't mention that shipping is free for orders of twenty five dollars or more. Okay. Okay. But and and how much is that per per face mask? Fifty cents. Fifty cents. There right. you go. So, so Bill's showing off his, his wannabe engineering degree, right, Bill? Yes, I want to be sure. <laughs> so, so anyway, but the next point is that if you now apply your $5 worth of right. gift tokens, okay, uh, see that? Sharif just put it up, $5, he knows, right. okay? So, so when you get your $5 worth of gift tokens, now it's going to cost you twenty dollars, and how much is that, Bill? Forty cents. Forty cents. All right, all right. See, in political political science, <laughs> they taught you they taught you math in political science. Yeah. Okay. How to add votes. But, yep. But so, you you are adding up savings. So let's let's because there's more okay. savings when you add the other five. That's right. So now. You get the additional five that I give you for signing up in the month of September. You get ten dollars worth of gifts and gift tokens. Okay. Now it's going to cost you fifteen dollars. And how much is that a mask? Thirty cents. Ah, oh, wow! Right on, Bill. It so keeps sliding down, and Bill's on top of it. Yes, Bill is on <laughs> top of it. So here's the thing: just, just all seriousness aside, okay. So, so there are five aspects. Of, um, of financial sustainability and financial fitness, really. Aspect number one is learn how you can save money because mm -hmm. when you save money, you can, too, pay for all of what you need to pay for, all of your, all, all of your monthly bills, okay? Uh, great, Sharif has got it now. But then we go to number three. You still have money left over that you can invest. Then you go to number four, which is 
you can have money left over to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. But if you truly save money and learn how to manage your money properly, you're going to have the ability to be able to pay forward. But with the, the, the online dollar store, you do number one mm -hmm. and number five all at the same time because you save money That's right. and you're helping to contribute to Money Masters PBS. And what a great mission. You know, oh, it's an amazing um, mission. And we yeah. got all kinds of great products. We got stuff for kids. We got stuff for the ladies. And I'm thinking, Sharif, oh, Sharif, I think that we don't even, do we really need the School of Economics? Because Lynn Skull <laughs> the whole School of Economics. So, yeah, like yeah. you said, Lynn has created the whole school that you're going to be teaching, folks. So, I think that, uh, I'm not sure what we're going to, I'm not it's, sure it's all about that. experience. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Lynn, so the products we have, because like, they're very, tell us about them. Well, I'm, I'm, here's what I'm going to do. I mean, first of all, um, if I can figure out how to share my screen, which I think I can, uh, I'm going to share um, the, okay, and I'm going to share. Okay. Can, 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 you, can you see my screen? I believe we can. We can, yeah, but let me see. Um, I'm going to try it as well. So we're going to try it in a couple of different there ways. We there we go. There we go. Okay. So, so Bill, we have quality products. Yep. I mean, when you think yep. about this, there really are quality products. Um, we have we have lots of beauty products for the women. Unfortunately, yep. um, if Kimberly would, would be here right now, you would know she does use them because yep. she she does not have anything – uh, any any evidence of any lines in her face? She has a beautiful face, so she uses a lot of the beauty products. But we also have a lot of CBD products, um, and which are which are really great. So one one thing we have is an extreme patch that has lidocaine in it, CBD with lidocaine. Ooh, Mark, we should I stop there. I see the cookies. Wait a minute. They've excited me over there for a minute. Yeah, you I got know. the we cookies. Should, the screen went by with cookies. Y'all know back. I love my cookies. We're going, we're going to go back. See, there are your cookies. Right. Um, but we have products from companies like Johnson & Johnson, Fisher-Price, Sesame Street, Dove, um, um, Dawn, uh, and not Dawn, Dove, um, um, Dial, um, What's what's Irish Spring, the one that Jim and Kimberly really like? Um, but if you go on, let's let's take another example. I'm going to go to one of the beauty products. Um, actually, I'm going to go to. Oh, I can't click on there. Click on here to clearance, and and um, when I'm going to what you're going to see is we have this, which is called um, the the. Clitivy, Clitivy, I, I, not eyelash enhancer. Got the wrong one, guys. Just okay. going to go back. Um, yeah, I knew, I knew, I could, I knew I could pronounce it properly. Um, You're doing just fine. We have high quality. Absolutely, here it is. That go ahead. Genesis, uh, this is the one, Bill, that I want to point out because yeah. this is maybe the best single example and why aspect number one will help you do aspect number five because here's a product called Genesis Solutions Line Free Lift, okay? Uh -huh. The uh -huh. exact same quantity, 12 milliliters, okay, um, 0.4 fluid ounces, mm -hmm. okay? This product sells on Amazon for $67.00. And you have to pay for shipping. We no. sell it for four dollars and ninety nine cents. I mean, it, and maybe this is the biggest example, but there are lots of other examples like this. Kimberly talks about the face masks that ladies like to use to make their face beautiful. Okay, uh -huh. well, she pays over twenty twenty dollars over the counter to buy the face masks, and we sell them for two dollars. So, so there are lots, there's lots of value here. Hmm. We don't sell cheap items, Bill. Yes. We, right. we sell quality items. Hey, and, Lynn, even for the uh, business folks, you have things like this. You've got the uh, clipboards and things of that nature. So that's sure, what I there got you go. Uh, good for you. So, so um, Lynn, I have, oh, go ahead, Bill. Sh Sharif has a question. Okay. Oh. Well, yes. I was going to ask simply uh, about uh, in the times of crisis, 
uh, how uh. your family dollar store, family dot dollar uh, store, uh, can assist others who might want to assist others, uh, either who suffer from some of these calamities. Well, so let's find a charity in the area where we have calamities, like like the hurricane that happened, Hurricane Lori that happened last week in mm -hmm. Louisiana. Find a charity that's helping them. Okay. Um, get their get their delivery address because we deliver right to the home or right to the business and and we can ship items to them. So you can give to a charity that helps the people in Lake Charles, Louisiana, and you don't have to leave your house. Um, they don't want people in Lake Charles, but the people who are down there need help. Sharif, go ahead. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, do you have any item like halal or kosher? Like, uh, like example from USA, I think I have more people, those who want to buy halal products or uh, on the other hand, kosher for, I think kosher and halal almost same. And uh, from Malaysia, there are many big companies. Maybe they can be your partner. Well, they could. Interesting. Um, we, as you know, Sharif, because we've talked about this before, um, we only uh, typically ship here in the United States. Doesn't mean we can't have products like Halal or, or, or the other one. Okay. I don't believe we do, but, uh, but I'll, I'll find out for you. So, so I'm going to ask you to spell it for me so I can look it up. How do we spell it? Halal. So go okay. ahead. Yes, I, I, I said that the halal item, H-A-L-A-L, -A -L, for Muslim Wait community. Minute, Sharif, you're trying to mess me up. You know that he's already got too many products as it is, and now you're adding more products. This is really yes, definitely. Like messed like, up this game that I've got. Where and, 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 I'm and trying to catch you, up with him, and now you're from, adding more products. Go yeah. ahead, no, from, Sharif. Yes, even from USA, you get uh, so from Malaysia, from Muslim country, you get many big partners for joining with you and supporting your business. And then you can invest more money in IBM TV. So I'm helping well, IBM TV. And, and that's very important. Yeah. So as you know, we look to, to um, open some online stores um, in India, in Malaysia, in, in um, Australia, because we know there is a demand. And when we do that, there definitely will be local products uh, such as what you, the halal that you're mentioning. But I will check to see if we have any of those because the, the founder of, of um, Dollar Store is, um, he, he's, he was born in India. He came here to go to college and he found, actually founded the store 24 years ago. So this is not some fly-by-night operation. This is a legitimate, long-standing uh, business. He's been very successful, written up in the, the Wall Street Journal and, and otherwise, and decided that the best way to go to market here in the U.S. was online. Well, as I've been talking for the last three to four months here on IBM TV, with lots of people like you, Sharif, who are from, from um, Malaysia, India, Hong Kong, um, uh, New Zealand, um, uh, Rakesh is from New Zealand, but lives in Hong Kong. Um, and of course, um, uh, we know Ankit, who is one of the producers. Uh, he's from Delhi. Um, everybody is saying we would like to have an online store here. And the idea when we, when we get to that point, Sharif, is we definitely will have local products and we will have local partners because we, we can't pick, pack and ship from the United States to Malaysia, it's way too expensive. Um, but but we so we will have local partners to partner with. And in fact, if you have some suggestions, we should be talking to them. Mm -hmm. So so um, you can either put it in the chat or I'll put my email in the chat and we can connect and you can send me the information. Why don't why don't I do that? And you can you can yeah. send me information. See, you know, Bill. Yeah. This is this is important because what Sharif is asking here is we live in a world that is getting smaller and smaller mm -hmm. where we want to help everybody in the world. OK. And so Sharif is talking about can we use some of the local products from over there? Well, I'm sure we can. But can we also help the people of Malaysia, Malaysia and the people of Bangladesh, where Sharif is originally from? So so. 
uh, yes, we can. And we can help people from India. We can, the, o the only place where we might not be able to help, and uh -huh. we need Nick to comment on this, is Great Britain, because Nick has this thing about Great Britain. <laughs> I think he, 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 he thinks that there's an issue with Great Britain. Uh, uh, I, no, there hasn't been an issue since, uh, you know, uh, we clearly won in the War of 1812. So uh, I mean, we won that war, but in, uh, I think he's just trying to like uh, take over the country of Great Britain. I think that's what's going on no. with the whole uh, Great Britain no. situation. And he, but then fight. again, he wants to take over countries all over the world. I mean, he was trying to buy Greenland. Let's be for real. He was trying to do a number of things, including getting Greenland and some other things. But Lynn, you know, I'm, you said we delivered all over the United States, but isn't there like a part of the country that's way over to the West that you're not sure whether we delivered to them? Because oh, you no, keep no, calling no. about them being like no. a separate country. And I know no, Jim's it, gone right now, but you talked about yeah, them being a bad. separate country. Yeah, too bad Jim isn't here. And you're, you're absolutely right. What we do do, if, if we don't deliver to foreign countries, unfortunately, because it's too expensive. And then it occurred to me, there is one foreign country we do deliver to. And that's the Socialist Republic of Northern California. And that's where Jim lives. And that's why Jim has been able to become a customer. Now, Sharif, and, and, and I will point this out, that Sharif being in Malaysia, we can't deliver to Sharif yet because we don't have stores there. But, when we, but right now, Sharif can still become a customer, okay? And he can then give his gift tokens to people he knows here in the United States. Now, for those people who have never seen Jim, they, they, they will have to make sure he's on next time. But we, we've blocked Jim from getting the tokens because he's trying to hoard all the gift tokens himself. Okay, so, so we want people, want you to give them to uh, people who will use them. Um, people like uh, Ankit has a sister who lives 20 miles from me in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. He has a brother that lives in Maryland, okay? Um, and um, Okuchuku Chukwu, who is from, um, uh, from, um, Ke um, okay, come on. Um, yeah, Nigeria, okay? Uh, Okuchuku, he, he's a customer and he has relatives who live here in the United States. So he can give, um, uh, give tokens. So anyway, um, that's great. I think we're finished. It's one Oh six. We've, we've run over time. Um, yeah. and, uh, uh, back to you, Mark, or back to Nick so that he can, uh, yeah, there's he, Nick. He, yeah. He's in charge yeah, of everything yeah. and, uh, definitely running things like he does right here on IBM TV and doing a great job. I did have a question for Lynn though, cause, um, you said that we can't deliver it to California cause he's in that other country and Bill's, you know, like my, uh, brother from another mother as the expression goes and everything so definitely got some real good connections with bill but um bill's in dc and they are used to playing political games in dc so are you sure we should deliver to bill either because he oh. is in dc where they do a lot of political games no. i'm afraid that we deliver to bill he might have a, like a secret pact with jim no. so they do a lot of that kind of like political no, no, no no deliveries to washington dc gentlemen gentlemen walk delicately here because the fiscal uh, budget is coming up, and it only takes one line item, oh. and it's an obvious, and oh. the right, you know, legislation. Oh, we need to protect okay. our First, first Amendment, um, Mark. Remember, First Amendment. Right, right, right. Trump I mean, I would, want to, or Trump, the Trump I, I would not want to outlaw the Minion Club, you know? I mean, no, definitely, yeah. definitely. No, yeah, we're, we're going to get support from the other Washington, we hope. But we do want to thank everybody for uh, attending Startup Wednesday on IBM TV. Our sponsor, Lynn Shepard from the Family Dollar Store, of course, gets a lot of our support. Uh, Bill Tresnant is trying to maneuver funds our direction from the Tower of Power at Washington, D.C. Sharif, who runs the Sharif School of Economics, the Ph.D. scholar in Malaysia. And, of course, we have Mark Lee, who does the online dinner store and dinner party, actually, I'm thinking store. The online dinner party. And also don't forget Mark Lee's Radio Hour, which is Monday on right. IBM TV. And we want to thank our listeners. Move over now. Sasha, Investing with Sasha is on right now. We don't want to overrun them. But thank oh. you all for attending IBM TV.